Oh, that's huh? good, bro. No, that's okay. why we have security pretty much is to protect us from wild Fousey. Some niggas like Fousey. Man's is man's is locked up. Right so that's kind of how you're feeling right now. You're just living in constant fear of Fousey just showing up <laughs> and controlling any situation that you're in. Dude, that man. Re- we're not doing any intros or any of that. Right? Let's just run please, it. please. No, okay. I hate that. It makes me feel suck. super weird. I, I don't feel like I deserve an intro. I, I don't know. Fousey just had one of the craziest like runs mm-hmm. I've ever seen in the history. Of the internet, and he does this from time to time. Like he, 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 he twenty eighteen was the last one. Exactly, he goes kind of quiet, and then he comes back having a manic episode, and everybody tunes in. All of a sudden, he's getting fifty thousand live viewers. Well, he's incredibly watchable, right? He's incredibly it's it. He's he's so easy to watch, but this one specifically was nuts. I mean, he was he was running, running the space mm-hmm. like 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 at the top of the streaming numbers. And I remember we had him on Jeff FM. And I asked him, I was like, yo, how long do you anticipate doing this for? He's like, oh, I'm going to be running 24-7 content till the end of the year. And I was like. Don't burn out. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I give it one one week. Right. And it was about a week. Right. And then and then just kind of started to, you know. Because, okay. Become kind of strange. This is the problem that we all deal with as creators is that if you are at the place in your life where you're happy and secure and your life is steady and safe and comfortable, you might have a great life. But for the people at home, it's much less interesting. For sure. Whereas if you're going through turmoil, if you're going through drama with your girl, if you're having a manic, psychotic episode, et cetera, you can be very, very interesting to watch. And that's why the streamers who seem like they're doing the best these days, if you talk about somebody like I Show Speed, he's kind of like always on the verge of having a meltdown. Fusi, you were like kind of always just waiting to see what, what might happen. happen. That, that, a lot yeah. of times the people you see with the craziest streaming numbers are those people where you feel like it could just kind of take off at any given moment. Well, listen, dirty laundry pays the bills. It has for a long time. People mm. are people want to see Britney Spears shave her head. They mm. want to see, you know what I'm saying? They want to see Paris Hilton have a have a wardrobe malfunction. You know what I'm saying? Like they want to see the 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 crazy happen. And that's why a lot of that stuff nowadays is manipulated and manufactured. Mm. You look at the Kardashians, for example, right? All this is created drama, created beef because they know that's what pays the bills. So the challenge is as a creator, a, a big creator, which I, which I don't claim to be a, a super macro like these guys, is 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 walking that line between drawing eyeballs to continue to do brand deals or 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 move units or whatever, and and maintaining mental sanity. Mm. Because bro, like like for me, for example, like when I was when I was dating Lana and when. It was like going crazy with, with when I, we were still, you know, together with Logan and everything was like this whole camp. There was always drama, constant drama, 24 seven. And I felt like I still feel that drama just eats at you. It, it, no matter how Teflon you claim to be, no matter how much you claim to be like unaffected, everybody's affected, whether it's consciously or subconsciously by all this bull. The Internet has become especially currently, and it continues to day by day, you know, digress into this environment of just honestly pure hatred. Mm. There's just, it, you, you sign on and as a creator or a normal human, what you have to see on the internet every day, it's, it's, it, it's, people say change your algorithm. No, you go on Twitter. This is, this is everywhere. It's, it's school fights, it's shootings. It's, you know, this person's getting arrested. This is happening. And so like, you're constantly trying to like maintain and walk the line between living in that nasty, nasty world and, and, and preserving yourself and maintaining some semblance of sanity. And that's what I was hoping Fousey would kind of realize as he, as he went through this last, you know, um, run was, yo, this 24 seven thing is not going to work. I've never really seen IRL streaming work out for anybody in the long run. Ice Poseidon destroyed his life. Fousey seems like it destroyed his life. I can think of a lot of other like tiny examples. But when you're allowing yourself to be, you know, participating in life with all these people that might just show up. Now, you look at somebody like Aiden Ross and Sneeko and what they're doing where they have security and maybe they, they rent out a house for their streams a large percentage of the time. I think that maybe makes sense. But with Fousey melting down off the IRL streaming thing, like a lot of the things that him up like people like calling him or calling the cops and swatting him and all this kind of stuff like these are the things that come with doing the irl streaming lifestyle whereas this in comparison right now 
very little chance of chaos. Like everything well, is very, very I controlled mean, in comparison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this is a chaotic happen. podcast, but we we go out of our way to try to make that not the case. Well, it's one of the reasons why I stopped streaming. I mean, I had a um, I had a relatively successful Twitch channel. I mean, I was you know probably six to fifteen thousand concurrent, depending on what I was doing on any given no, day. Good, and, yeah. and obviously, like you know, I'm not I'm never gonna lie and 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 try to you know, falsify the, the, the truthhood that, you know, I, I'm a collaborator. I, I have been. And I think, I think, you know, m my ability to, to, um, build rapport, to finesse, to, to scratch backs and have back scratch in return has been, a, has been a big part of my career. And I think, I think, you know, streaming, streaming is good for that. You mm. can do collabs in real time. You can hit people up, but for whatever reason, I just, it felt like streaming, you know, brought along with it a certain number of like, uh, like uncontrollable pieces. Mm -hmm. Like, like you said, that anything can happen. Factor. Mm. When I when I I do vlogs still. I'm well, I, I like I to watch a bunch of them last night. Yeah, I've been watching great content. Thank yeah. you, bro. Good Thank shit. you. I but, like, but you basically like film all week. You're doing your little David Dobrik thing, but you're going for like 15 minutes instead of four minutes and 20 seconds, right? I like to consider myself like the the last of the vloggers. Mm. Vlogging vlogging is dead. It's it's actually kind of sad to be honest with you because it it was really the uh, it really was the the format that built all of it, like all of that you know early on, um, Casey and Roman and all these guys who who you know were were churning out these daily vlogs. Yeah, mine's a little bit different. I may shoot. I may shoot one vlog in three countries. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and I might shoot for, I might shoot for eight days between ads, signings. You know, like like all the different parts of the format, and then there's hours of footage that then gets whittled down, edited, brand deals. You know, there's strategy that goes into all the creative to create this final piece that's a weekly vlog. And now when I when I start to talk to people about burnout on YouTube and, and, and my personal mental health, which I'm sure you guys know has kind of always been a little up and down as well. Uh, maybe not to the extent of Fousey's at least, at least visually, but you know, it's something that I continue to struggle with. Um, I don't put out daily content, but these things, it might as well be, mm. you know what I'm saying? Cause I shoot so much that goes into one of these episodes to yeah. create these like really enthralling, you know, uh, longer format pieces. Cause you could be putting out like one, not great quality vlog Every per ease. day, like the way that everybody used to do. A hundred, bro, mm. bro. My, see, that's the thing. My, my life is genuinely exciting every single day, which, which I've also found is a, is a, a gift and a curse. Like I never, I don't have those days where I get to sit down and, and, and turn off. You know what I'm saying? Like I always have going on. So I mm. easily could wake up, create content, put it out every single day, 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 day which is kind of like what streaming is, but it just presented so many obstacles to me, like you said, where it's just like, I don't know what the fuck is gonna happen. I don't know. Sometimes I don't even know what the fuck's gonna come out of my mouth. And I don't know if I, in, in today's like society, I don't know how I feel about that. Right, and if you're even a little bit open, that's like a big part of the appeal to the people. It's like, oh, I'm gonna get to hear him say the, the, the F slur. If I watch this long enough, he's gonna slip up <laughs> and say yeah, something yeah. mean to his girlfriend and they're gonna get in a fight and that's which like- Which used to happen. Yeah, which happens to like any streamer at a certain point, their, their actual real life is gonna start to intersect with what they're doing on there. Yeah, and yeah. it's just, and it's just, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really fuck with the, let, like let's get macro for a second here like really like conversationally i don't really f with like the new direction of things and the way things are like going right and this is gonna elaborate on that i'm yeah, very interested yeah. In this. yeah hello no jumper audience <laughs> how's no, this everybody is, this doing this is important we're not yeah. gonna ask you about the island boys making out we're gonna talk about the future of content no i want to no no i want to talk about all that because i want <laughs> i want you guys to have a good time out there I, I miss you guys it's been a while since i did this show and 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 bro you've been through some it, Tap lately. in with the hip hop community. What are you talking about? I ain't been through nothing, bro. You've been through some <laughs> shit. Like this past year has been crazy, and I've been <laughs> watching all of it. Right? And just oh, nuts. He's an observer. Okay. And obviously, like I have my feelings on all of it as someone who like waited, dipped the toes, uh. but didn't quite like fully penetrate the community. Well, no, I did that, but like not like outward facing. You okay, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, like I have my Lana shit, and obviously, right. like I. 
walked around with like a bunch of. But, but that's actually we we need to talk about that at one point that I consider you a coward and a traitor okay, because yes, you came okay, right yes. up to the I'm limit perfect. of loving a sex worker, but she was an ex sex worker, so it didn't really count. And then you guys don't work out, and now you're just dating all these beautiful models. It's like no, I need to see you with someone who has been <laughs> before, or else I consider you a fake. But continue, I, continue. Yeah, table that for yeah. a second. So the reason the reason why I don't with all this new is because like I just it, I feel like we're at this like end times and almost feels like so dark for content right now. Like this new this new red pill mm. community is so corny to me. Like like really like it's 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 guised under this desire to better young men and steer them away from the evils of this world, which 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 I am I'm okay with that. Do do I think that porn consuming porn is necessarily a healthy activity? I don't, to be completely honest with you. I, I really don't. I think that it does set some some precedents and some and some poor behavioral qualities in men and and maybe things that are unable to be achieved by the average person and creates like this strange like kind of relationship which i get all that mm. right but but as someone who grew up on stern right and hugh hefner and like all of these people i came up with the assumption that it that being with hot girls in reality and content whatever was a cool thing <laughs> yeah these motherfuckers now are trying to make it a not cool thing, mm. right? Like, 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 like the guys who don't get pussy are trying to rewrite the rules. Thank you. That's that's what I'm trying to say, and that shit really stresses me out because as someone who really does get pussy, like actually <laughs> you do. does, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro, it really upsets me because now the the nerds, similarly to with hip hop, yeah, we'll we'll bring this back to we'll hip hop for a it. sec, right? Similarly to with hip hop, where the um. The, the the addicts became the cool guys. At first it was the dealers, right? At yeah. first it was Jay, it was Biggie, it was Pac, the people that were out hustling, telling stories about what it was like to move to move weight. Then the drug addicts became leaders of the space. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, you saw this like strange like transition from one thing to the other. And 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 by the way, like who knows what those effects were on the sound? I mean, we're gonna talk about it later. But like, obviously, I'm not with hip hop in its current space, even close. Maybe I'm an old head, maybe I'm, I don't know. Like, I don't know what the reasoning is, Things right? have changed, for sure. Things have changed a lot. But like, when you look at this content flip now too, it's like, now the cornier, cornier you are, the bigger a nerd you are, the hotter you're getting in the current space. Mm. I, like, keep in mind, I see all of these people outside in the real world. Cause, yeah. cause, Cause that's the real thing that we all gotta keep in mind here. There's content, and then there's real fucking life, bro. Those are dramatically different things. Unfortunately, there's been such a bleed through between the two that that every viewer out there, every person out there, thinks the two coincide or have some sort of match, uh, uh, you know, are, are symbiotic in some way. Mm. But I see these people out, and they're not they're not cool people, bro. They're not cool people, and they've become so elevated online because of this new this new like strange environment. But I posted a picture the other day of me and my new chick. I'm 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 newly in a relationship. Who is offensively hot. Who is it's offensively offen How old hot? Is she? She's 25. Oh my god. It's just it's just all. She's it's up. She's, she's like way too hot. Yeah. Where the fuck did you find her? In Miami. Yeah. At a club or So so yeah, that's kind of the up thing because she she's she has a past of like clubbing, you okay. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she's she we everybody has a past, and that's like I want to get into that. And too. the new red sp red pill space, you can't. You're not allowed. Like, no. if, yeah, yeah. Don't that's a big part of it too. Started. Any girl who's had sex with anyone before you is now useless. That's another like new rule that the red pill space is trying to implement. The non getters are now telling you that if your girl ever the dude before you then she is no good even one even one even one but never mind if she gets to five or ten bodies <laughs> then she's really dead, dead, excluded dead. never going anywhere near her yeah <laughs> but but do you see what i'm saying like all of these dudes who by the way like your home whether it's, whether who aiden ross or he aiden ross yo let me tell you this aiden ross Clout, red a, a, exactly Him aiden ross Nico. i let me let me say some shit i love aiden because, and I really mean that. Like, it's not like some like fake love, like like bull. 
I love Aiden. That's like my little brother. Mm. And he's actually like, he comes out, he hangs, he goes out, he, yeah. he, he can work rooms. He can be on the jet with people talking about business. He's cool. He knows his, he knows his shit. Like he's, he's cool in, in real life. But like, but like, yes, dude, a lot of it is just, a lot of it is just very fraudulent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And like, and like, so anyway, so I, I, I'm with this, I'm with this girl. We just started dating. I post a picture of the, of her the other day on uh, Twitter. So it's only been official for a few weeks or something? Not a couple months. Okay. But, but publicly you've been careful about how much you put out there? I think I've like tried to like keep it off the radar right. a little bit. Just because you having a girlfriend is like such a meme at this point that you don't really <laughs> like want to like put her through the the whirlwind hailstorm well, of being your girlfriend immediately. You want to slowly let it trickle into her life. Yeah, kind of. And also she was oh, this is like this is like crazy to even talk about. Cuz a lot of this here's another thing that I'll say. A lot of this is for me one of the biggest things with social media and with creator content is that from an audience perspective, they want everything simplified mm. to its to its like easily most easily explained, you know, core idea. But the problem there is it doesn't allow for the fact of the matter, which is that life and every situation in it is complicated. Mm. Nothing is super duper binary black and white yeah. a and b where where shit's like so easily explained and because of the age of consumption of a lot of this red pill content which is these these are children mm. these are children they're they're you know 12 to, to 16 to 17 years old they don't understand the complexities of this life this you you guys know this as well as I do. It, it, trying to trying to define someone by any individual characteristic is so futile. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, this isn't a one size fits all situation. So so. Anyways, going back, I meet this girl in Miami. She had stepped out for a night. I meet her. I'm like, yo, that girl's like you said, like ridiculous. Bro, like you right? could actually become a serial killer and like. <laughs> take out a couple of families <laughs> if it meant that you would get to like sniff her ass. Right. But like, but like, dude, no, like, that too much no, no, it's fair. It's, it's <laughs> exactly. Yes. And I, that's what I did. Exactly. Yes. So I, so I meet her, we like hit it off and like, you know, I know like contrary to the audience assumption that like the Lana relationship was a fluke. Like I do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I seen something, I was like, dude, this is a dope chick. I want to get to know her. And, and that's, that's it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm proud to... of you because when I met you, you were just trying to f random porn stars that Lena was friends with and shit. And I was like, oh, okay, this guy, Mike, you know, he's, he's doing his thing. But I've and seen then you kind of like ele uh, elevate through the game. Well, yeah. it flipped it into a point where then they were trying to fuck me. Mm, and then yeah. I was actively not trying to fuck them. Right. And it, it like continued to kind of evolve to a point where it's at now where I'm like, okay, like I kind of like this idea of, and I will say this too about the, the red pill thing. It it does have um, some some real beneficial qualities mm -hmm. because some of the stuff that these guys say, like I want to, and I know I'm jumping all over the place. Sorry to the audience. I'm very <laughs> I'm very um, ADHD and I'm I'm a bit hyper today. I've been I don't know. I got a lot on my mind, but but some of the shit that these red pill guys say actually does have merit to it, and that's mm -hmm. what that's what's a bit upsetting about it. Is it's like like I was. Tate, for example, mm -hmm. a lot of these guys are just trickle down Tates, oh, yeah. you know, TDTs, yeah. we'll call them, right? Like, like, cause he's not saying a lot of the more aggressive shit that he, he was, was saying a couple of years correct. ago, you know, correct. He kind of like, he kind of like, um, as I've been saying on podcasts lately, kind of was humbled by his experience a little bit. Right. Like, yo, I can, I can still do this shit, but let me just not do all that extra shit because I don't you get need thrown to. in jail. You lose all your social media. Your name gets dragged through the mud. Every single corporation in the media is writing articles about you and making hit pieces about you. Right. Uh, which is why it was kind of 
surprising to see somebody like Aiden Ross, who realistically a couple of years ago, the world was his oyster and he could kind of like do whatever with his superpowers, his, his new level of fame. And he kind of like chose to go in this Tate-esque direction for which, a little bit which was kind of, but even now it's like he, he leans into the very offensive uh style of content which i like personally but if i were to be the one living his life i would have suggested like maybe you don't want to like push the limit like this this hard well, because it him, closed doors for you well for him certainly i mean this was a conversation that we were having all the time with aiden back when i was living with him because we had that house together right. and and i remember at the time like this was just post like Bronny and like, you know, like when he was just, he was, he was really starting to swim with like some big dogs, like, like, and, and, and by the way, by the way, like we were having like conversations with Brady and, and he was getting on with LeBron and I was like, bro, this dude, honestly, he, he's such a relatable, funny, quirky kind of kid that everybody kind of like with if you leave all the other dumb shit to the side mm -hmm. yo he could become the voice for the youth of like the nba like really really go after that sports you know demographic and really tackle that entire um you know gen z aspect of drawing new eyes to these to the to sports and to all of these things like he really he is as as uh rudimentary of a human as people think he is mm. he's he's funny he's relatable and he's, yeah. he's got a little bit of charisma and yeah, charm to him right he's a funny kid but he went in the other direction and i think at least short term monetarily it's it's paying off for him mm. i mean obviously by way of what he's been able to do a kick and with um, with steak and and some of the stuff he's been able to do he's making it work regardless like the streaming space and the content space has so many opportunities available right now that you can go in the most offensive direction possible and still be able to make some shit happen if you are one of the most viewed streamers on the planet and that and that's what we're seeing right yeah. and that's and that's like the question of like where this all pans out right because it really has started to get into a conversation around free speech, mm -hmm. right? Which is outside of our bubble, kind of a massive conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, should this thing that we call society and content and media just be wide open, open throttle type shit? You know what I'm saying? And I was thinking about it in the way over here. It's like the left is crazy. Like real, real crazy bro <laughs> to like the point where so many young people don't really want to associate themselves with the left because then they think that that means that they are need to be in favor of you know children transitioning and and all the things that the furthest left people advocate for correct and then i like to say now the right is angry mm. okay and so and so like for a person like me or you who who i think a lot of our some of our values are are aligned, at least in the way that we look at some things. I would say largely, probably. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, 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 they always try to press me on this gender shit. Mm. How many genders? As I and see by Nico pressing you, about and, that and, and usually when it's in the midst of a debate about a separate topic, you know, <laughs> yeah. they'll just yeah. throw it out there, smoke bomb, and then they yeah. run in the other direction. Because, uh -huh. Gotcha. You can't answer it. It's not that I can't answer it. It's just. It's just truthfully deep within my soul i don't study it i know you got some people that say there's genders then there's sex and they're two different things and 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 the bible says this and the quran says but i don't know about all that stuff and 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 when i say to someone i don't care they think it's a cop out mm. but i think deeply from a from a liberal standpoint this is one of my liberal values or at least uh libertarian values I genuinely don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't even one iota of me wakes up every day and says like, huh, shouldn't be fucking having more than two genders. I mean, how many trans people have you ever even had a conversation with in your life? I don't know. Even know. Well, that's, that's <laughs> for, an for issue. Me, I will maybe bring like, up. I don't know. Maybe yeah. a that's handful, an issue. Yeah. you know, maybe, maybe 10. Like if I really were to scrape the inside of my brain and if you were to include like a two minute conversation at a party or something. So how much time are you willing to give those 10 people? Do you feel me? So like when they yeah. ask me that question, I'm like, okay, I can either answer this question like half heartedly. Like I know my answer, but I just really don't give a fuck. Now to your point kids should not be learning about this shit mm. 
the, the, the right has a reason to be angry about that. Kids should not be learning about anything rela related to f sex, pre-14, whatever it is, years old, when adults start to learn about becoming sexually active. And, and on that same note, I've said multiple times, maybe another thing I don't know a lot about, but the idea that any kid should be making permanent decisions about mm. their fucking gender to me is ridiculous. But the left can't concede that. I because understand. if they concede any ground, then they're already like giving up ground to the right. Which and is, that's the problem. They refuse and that's to take the problem. part. Yeah. Both sides are unwilling to to waver on their on their beliefs. And so and so you've got this wild you know, left, you've got the angry right, which, which by the way, I, I consider now to be the, I consider the, the right to be the woke side now. So mm. bringing me all the way back full circle to what just started this conversation, my, my, my wonderful girlfriend, who by the way is so much more than just being pretty. She's very, a, a magical, awesome person. I don't know her personality, so I'm forced to judge her based she, on her looks, but I'm sure she's amazing. She's very cool. Huh. She's very cool. Very mature, very whatever right so i post this picture of her on twitter cuz it was just a it was just a cool picture i just like posted it right and i didn't realize that like her fucking dress was like in that light a little bit see through mm. bro <laughs> you would think these kids have never seen a shadow of a nipple but they're all screenshotting it haram haram yeah. motherfucker you're christian you grew up in in Connecticut, bro. Right. What you haram is not a word. It's but a part of a belief system. Haram you is don't just like a slang term to. at That's this point. That's what I'm trying you know? to say. Yeah. Everything is so fucking trash and ruined, bro. Right. So now I'm like, oh fuck, dude. Now, now you got the people that aren't even pseudo or fraudulently uh, uh, red pill. You got the the red pill dick riders. So Dylan Dennis goes mm. and retweets the picture, right? With a picture of my girl at a club with two bottles of champagne next to a dude. <laughs> like it was some fucking grand masterpiece. Like it presented to the world. I have found the picture that's going to, that's going to like debate his happiness. Right. Yeah. Motherfucker. I am immune. Have you not seen my ex? Right. <laughs> Have you not seen? You think you're going to post a picture of my girl in a club with a dude fully dressed with two bottles and I'm going to have a feeling about it? Right. My ex was doing gangbangs. Comp per, your, compilations. per your last situation. And I was chilling. With the same guy that Lena shot with. Exactly. <laughs> With Jay Love, Jay Luzzi. Jay Love. Yeah, Jay Luzzi. Got people know. No, no, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? So like, so like, what picture do you intend on posting that where I'm gonna be like, <gasps> Right. You, okay, so anyways, but 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 even off of that fact for a second, he posts this photo and and these these children, many of them red pill influenced, you know, kind of turned on by this new uh <laughs> Prerequisite of virginity for women, or just not don't go to the club. Bro, 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 bro. Don't stand not, next no, to no, a dude no, no, no. for a photo. No, they see that photo, and and it turns into this like like a uh, snowball effect of right. oh got him yeah got him you're gonna wipe that up. Not to mention her nipple, the shadow of her nipples. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, why do I post? Because that's the question you start asking once you get to a point, and this is the same shit as Logan. Now, we'll, let's get into it, right? It's like he starts asking himself that question, like, why do I even post? I'm a, I'm a fucking millionaire, dog, about to be a billionaire, right, who runs this shit. Why am I going to put anything out there to be criticized, to be criticized, to be ripped open, and then, more importantly, to be bought into by a crew of children? Right. Yeah, it's a 
fucking weird world that it's we just live in. It's really now. strange. But then you bro. understand the the way that so many celebrities like look at the Twitter accounts for all of the most famous people in the world, and on average, they probably never tweet or tweet every six months. It's The Rock tweeting out a link to his movie or right, whatever. Right. But the average extremely famous person chooses to not use these platforms to show their actual life, and then you start to understand like you and I are both people who throughout our lives have basically used our real lives to create content, whether it's who we're dating or who we're hanging out with, et cetera. And you start to see how that just doesn't really seem as appealing once, you know, people really start to take aim at you. Now I'm a person who's kind of just accepted that this is just the world that I live in. Of course, I'm kind of like courting hate and like the hate is part of what's making my business bigger. But not everybody wants to necessarily take that on. And if you're not monetizing your existence, then why even? And especially with somebody like Logan, I don't know exactly like what her life was like, uh, Nina, before all this shit. But there's got to be part of her that is like, oh, fuck, this is what it's like being with you. I have to deal <laughs> yeah, with this yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. This might have been, as far as I know, this is a girl who's never really dealt with any kind of public yeah, backlash. Yeah. She's got to live this fun life of like, oh, I'm hot and I'm <laughs> hanging out and I'm having a good time and life is great. And then all of a sudden you start dating this guy who is reasonably hated and you are just under fire on a daily well, basis. Well, it was it was weird timing, right? Because he had he had given her these like, like she was warned. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like she knew that what came along with, with like being in a relationship with Logan, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he is call it hated, controversial, whatever you want to call it at any given time. I think sometimes the stock value goes up to a, a point where it's like maybe almost neutral, like whatever. Right. But there's a lot of controversy. There. There's a lot of problems there and a lot of, and more importantly, a lot of motherfuckers taking shots at the throne. Mm -hmm. Like that's been a thing forever. Everybody knows that. Right. So like she signs on, and, and and is cool with all this. And I think it just so happened to to fall into this perfect storm where red pill Twitter was a, 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 and Twitch was starting to require virginity mm -hmm. for even being an acceptable specimen of woman. Otherwise, you are discarded. But it's funny because so, hold on, wait, let me, me, me and Lena fit into this whole paradigm as well, but it was from doing something that the average person could hold genuinely on, don't agree not, don't they would dare, never do. Right. Don't conflate these. But I want to like, talk about that yeah. separate, but the idea okay. of even bringing that into this right now is going to fucking muddy shit. Okay. So you're much. right. You're right. So let me say, okay. So they start their relationship. <laughs> So they start their relationship right around this blast off for red pill, right? Uh -huh. Where, where, where that's happening. He then picks a partner to fight that is potentially one of the most ruthless, mm. unforgiving, by the way, d diabolical. Like, and I'm not, and one thing I won't t take away from Dylan is, you know, he he's good at what he does. Like he may be the potentially the best troll, one of the best trolls on the planet. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and. Gift and a curse that may end up not ending well for him. You I had never even thought about this guy of until, course. you know, and maybe how, a little bit of like, oh, it's a fighter or some shit. He fought someone at some point, but I didn't know him like on a first name basis. Now I feel like I know all about how him do you as think a result fucking, of this. How do you think Logan feels about that? Yeah. He, he's the, re he, in this strange way is the reason why mm -hmm. all of this happened. Like nobody gave a fuck about Dylan Dennis leading up until the Logan Paul fight. There was right. nobody mm -hmm. that was asking, asking for him. Yo, Not what's this dude doing? There wasn't a single person in the world. When you do a boxing match, that's what you're doing is you're swapping clout with the other person. And in this case, Logan had so much more to give him, especially because he was willing to go all out in terms of attacking well, and his, so his many people hate life. him. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so many people hate Logan. And so it's just a matter of like, yo, now I can weaponize that audience, right? So so Logan awakens this beast, which is which is also fueled by this new red pill, you know, agenda to to create and 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 also propagated by a youthful audience that doesn't even understand how fucking vaginas work. They've mm. never even seen a fucking pussy in their fucking lives. Right. Yet they are the the um authority on them. Right. These are like representatives of the fact that like male virginity is at an all time high. So high. Yeah. And the, that, and neon is one of their new saviors. Save it. Put it, put it to the side. <laughs> put it put it to the side. We're bro. muddying things, yeah. No, 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 no. That's fine. So so all this shit happens and it creates this this perfect storm for, you know, the chaos that we're now witnessing. And um 
Very similar to the picture that we talked about earlier. You know, Nina has exes, mm -hmm. just like any girl at 30 plus years old has exes. She is 30, exes, okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Like exes, A-list, whatever you want to call it, right? Exes, yeah. past lovers, right? Like what are we, 12, right? But then also has 140 million pictures of her posing with dudes at parties. Right. Every porn star, fuck that. Every girl, model, porn star, actress, uh, you know, Zendaya, uh, uh, you know, comedians, Whitney Cummings has a million pictures of them with their arm, with a dude with their arm around her at a, at a cocktail party. Right. The juvenile, almost fucking just idiotic, uh, 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 sense of this, of this audience on Twitter, that if you take a picture with another human, you have fucked that person <laughs> is how do you, this, this is the question I want to ask you. How much time do we as humans even waste on this conversation? It's so stupid. It's so this embarrassing. This has to be one of the dumbest fucking things I've ever talked about in my life. You can't stand next to someone and take a picture without now, without it being assumed that you have put their cock into your vagina. Like that to me is like. Insane to bro. me when I was in high school, I had a high school girlfriend for like a year and a half or two years And she had made out with a guy that I was friends with before we started seeing each other We started seeing each other at 16 when she was like 15 She had made out with this friend of mine and I'm 16 and I'm kind of jealous and I don't know what to do with my emotions And I remember being a little bit annoyed by it But then I got over it because I realized well if you like her who gives a fuck about what she's done in the past? It doesn't really like say that much about her. This is before she even knew you. And at a certain point, I just had to realize like, as you get older, it's going to be more and more of a consistent thing that the girls that you get into relationships with or the girls that you like will have hooked up with some dude that you know, or have a whole shitload of exes. And by the time you make it to 30, this is going to seem like total, like a total non-factor. Again, that was me when I was 16. I settled this in my brain and was able to sort of wrap my head around the fact that a woman's sexual past is not that important. So it is so shocking to me that we keep consistently having to have this conversation and shout out to Brian from the whatever pod but I mean this guy is having a conversation about body counts for five hours no, every so night that's so wack, and he bro. never tires of talking no, about this and so the wack. audience doesn't tire of listening to the it. thing the thing that I think is like okay the two two points on that and that's why I love coming on this show because these conversations have just like trickled down where we can go in a million fucking different directions right as you just said, as a as a woman who's single at the age of 30, right now we're dealing with a divorce rate of around, what, 55, 60% of marriages are ending in divorces at this point. So mm -hmm. you got to assume that a lot of these women who are married in their mid-20s are going to be single, right? And maybe had partners beforehand, maybe had multiple partners beforehand, maybe had a hoe phase in college, whatever the fuck, right? And are going to be single at 30. Mm -hmm. Very realistic idea, very realistic non-perfect idea because that's the other problem with these people is they they once again like i said earlier think the world is this perfect binary place where it, it you're either the a bible, virgin or a whore yeah, yeah. and where the bible is going to dictate exactly how your life is going to go and that's and that's exactly what's going to happen right mm -hmm. now it has started to churn this very strange niche red pill community of men and women pushing for Men to be talking to very young women, Berserker very effect. pure young. Like, <laughs> where are we going with this right now, guys? Like, what the fuck is happening? What is happening right now, dude? Pump the fucking brakes for a second and really look at where this is starting to go, dude. Right, because if you expect pure sexual purity from the woman that you're going to be spending time with, then you basically end up in the position where the only women who are going to be totally sexually pure are the ones who are like in high school. So then you end up with John Zerka tweeting about how he wants to marry a 17-year-old, which is a very weird splintered out effect from this whole Correct. thing. Correct, because especially when you marry that with the fact that 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 side of the world is so against that type of activity as everyone should be, but they're right. so vocally against that type of activity that now you get this weird, hypocritical, conflated scenario where you can't not win. And that's the prop. That's the problem is just, is just these fucking, 
these fucking gurus, bro, who, who many of them with no life experience. I want to keep Tate out of it because I will say this. He, he, he's been through, he's been through some shit. You can, you can see that you Mm -hmm. can, he's weathered, bro. Like, I don't know if he's the warrior that he claims to be. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but he's definitely been some, through some shit. He's been in fucking prison. He's dealt with the death of, of his fucking Parents. At least it seems like, like real life advice from his experience, which you. a lot of these guys, it feels like they're just listening to other podcasters say things and they're running with it, even though they haven't really had that experience. That's right? exactly what I'm getting at. And the problem, the problem with that, and I, th- I don't know if Tate would agree with this. And I honestly, like I take this for whatever you want. I would love to, I would love to have a conversation with that man. I have, I have had some back and forth with them on text. Um, and I would be interested to go to fucking Bucharest or whatever to sit down because I know that he's actually been through some shit. And I know he's he said some shit and he's he's been through some shit that people find fucked up, whatever. But he's at least been through it. And that's been one of the hardest pills for me to swallow is me getting into these like morality conversations and and these conversations with people who've never been through the real shit, like the real shit war warfare, bro. Mm-hmm. Like actual, like, like, like you want to say drug addiction is a, is a, is a self-imposed, you know, disease, call it for what it is. But I lived on the streets for 10 years. I spent my entire life disappointing, shaming, regret, felony arrest, firearms, like really lived in that shit for a decade of my fucking life. It defined me as a human, mm. bro. And, and then to think that you would turn away from this girl that you're seeing now as a result of like, I don't know, like, let, let's say that she <laughs> slept with a bunch of guys. Who the fuck cares? No, 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 no. You're but, from the East Coast. We're from New England, Connecticut. It, life is hard, man. We, girls don't look like that where we're from. <laughs> no, but, Ever. No, but it's even deeper Ever. than that. This girl, this girl, all she did was show a shadow of a nipple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So, yeah, like, yeah. imagine me Not and I'm sitting no there like, bro, like, what the fuck is good? But it's another issue that I have with this new guru society that we're living in is there's a tremendous amount of learning that comes out of personally touching the stove, bro. Mm. Your mom and dad can tell you every day of your life, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove. But when you touch that stove and you feel that shit start to singe into your fucking skin and into the muscle in your fucking hand and you really, really remember what that felt like. They say that lessons not learned in blood are soon forgotten. This idea that we can just deliver a a, a one size fits all message to our youth, to our male youth. And it's going to just create this society of perfect men is fucking stupid. Men have to learn through trial, through tribulation. I'm not saying they have to make the same mistakes that I do, but everything that I am today is a result of the consequences that I had to face for my fucking actions. So just simply substituting those with, with, this idea that we can all exist based on this circle round peg circle hole mentality is fucking stupid to me. Here's my question. You start seeing this girl. Have you asked her about her body count? There is not a single human in my entire life that I've ever come in contact with that whether, unless it was for the dumbest content that I regret saying where I've said, yo, what's your body? How fucking stupid of a fucking question is that? But don't you think at a certain point in the relationship, it becomes normal? Because I've spoken to multiple girls. Lena's assistant goes on a date with a random guy and and tells us that the guy asked her on the first date what her body count was. That blew my mind. It just seems insecure to me. To me, that means that you should be excluded from ever getting pussy from this person that you just asked that if you ask that on a first date now a month two months into the relationship you start really hanging out and stuff then it starts to feel like maybe more of a normal question but why would a girl ever give you an honest answer if she knows that you're going to use this against her it's just maybe i'm just listen sometimes i like to assume that maybe i'm just very different because that's a that's an important that's also an important thing and it Not to keep harping on it, but it goes back to what I said earlier about the differences between all of us as humans, different, uh, different strokes for different folks. You know what I'm saying? Like all of us are different people Mm -hmm. because of the shit that I've done in my life, the mistakes that I've made, because I'm such an imperfect human who, who I I like to believe that nowadays. And I think I've gotten a a pretty, unfortunately, I've, I've either miscommunicated my way into a, into a little bit of a weird you know, feelings towards me of a, of a, of a greater public outside of my audience. 
but I am a good person, bro. I wake up, I truly, truly try my best to, to do as little harm on this planet as possible, to brighten people's days, to be positive, and, and more than anything, to be empathetic with people's past and to understand that people are up against shit that, that we don't understand. Mental demons, so, socioeconomic demons, um, family abuse, sexual abuse, traumatic you know, shit from their past that, that, that shapes things that they're doing now or in the past that they may be ashamed of. But who the fuck am I to go, go fucking judge somebody or to, or to call a girl a fucking whore? Like, do you know, do you, th me pointing a fucking rock at you, you'd have to point a hundred, but imagine right. a girl asked me my body count. That's disgusting. <laughs> I have no that idea. That is fucking you, you disgusting. Even no fucking clue. <laughs> and I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud of that, yeah. which is why, which is why the, 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 com the conversation I have with a woman when we first start to talk is, is not as conversational as it is awareness-based. Is this girl currently a whore? <laughs> right. That's a conversation I'm having with myself. I'm not asking her. Right. I'm, I'm observing. I'm going to figure this my, out on my own. I'm not going to ask you because you're the worst person to you ask. You feel me? Or maybe she's not. Maybe she is telling the truth. But I'm still going to verify based on my trusted resources in whatever city you come from what your activities and actions from the past and currently look like. Okay, but I never asked Elena her body count. But I did tell her early on when we started seeing each other. I said, if you fucked anybody who I'm around, who's relevant in my field. Yeah, that's more I way need to different. Conversation. Way different. And I'm not going to get mad at you about it, but I need to know. If it's a guy who used to come to my bike shop all the time that I know by, I know his first name, I want to know because that, that shit could actually be really awkward for him. For sure. Got a couple of names, no big deal. We moved past it. But that, there's a level to which you kind of need to know that. Especially like within your like pretty decent circle. Like it, maybe... It, yeah. You know if you I'm fuck saying? Jeff Wittick and you're not going to tell us, then no, we, we need to know. We need to know because that's, that's that'd be very weird for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Circle or industry, right? Or it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Because it, because, because you know, at the end of the day, and that's the problem. You're in so many industries. <laughs> uh, it's so many industries adjacent. We're just in such a like a. At the end of the day, like men are so ego driven, right, and so pride driven that the idea that another chick or that another dude like might have fucked your girl is like problematic, right? Because, mm. because like. Then you start asking yourselves questions like, was it better than mine? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this, and I will get into your, because mm. that's a great segue, <laughs> right? But like, but like, but like, it's just become very strange, right? It's just become a very strange time. And it's very unrealistic to imagine this, this, this prerequisite of purity in the other human. And, and, and also like, once again, I just say it, like people can believe whatever they want. If the, if what you believe is based on some sort of uh religious background or something that you study i have no problem i'm not out here trying to like really really shun people and be like don't do that but for me personally to ever be that concerned with what someone did in their past if i know right now for a fact maybe it's because of who i am as a man maybe it's because of my my ability my capabilities and how i'm throwing down maybe it's because of whatever right clout whatever you want to say i always feel very secure in my relationships always the day that that starts to feel different, where I start to feel like, yo, maybe we got a problem here, I just walk away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's your job as a man is to make decisions about your girl's current character and, and then base your decisions off of that. You know what I'm saying? Like some numbers, if you meet a girl and her not, and you fall in love with her, as you said earlier, and you have those feelings and she's mature and, you know, she's... This, this girl was making my bed the first time she came to my house, folding clothes, making me Cuban coffee, like, like really, really being mature and respectful. Yo, she's guess, Cuban, Cuban. She's an Island girl. Yeah. Mm. I said to her, I said, I said, yo, next week I'm going on a trip to Oktoberfest in Munich with Corinna Kopf and Stella anal princess Barry. Shout out anal princess. And she said, okay, have fun. There was they no, were already months in. No, no of moments course, of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, of course she, there's moments of weakness there's moments of whatever but it's delivered maturely mm. it's delivered properly yo this picture that you posted here was a little bit like let's talk about it if there's a reason you had to post it like let me know let's just figure it out together like bro this girl is fucking mature way beyond her her years more mature than me that's not hard that goes a long way with me too because it's just like if you're just in this industry and in this world it's like you're just gonna be in a lot of situations and i know rapper dudes who spend their entire life 
arguing with their girlfriends so because they have to shoot music videos with a bunch of models. They have to go to the strip club as part of their career. There's a shitload of girls in their dressing room, even if it has nothing to do with them. Now, a lot of these guys are cheating all the time as well, which makes it even more See, complicated. I don't do that, and that's another thing. I've, I've never, I've never cheated. I've never but, been. A but cheater. you will take a successful dude who has a great thing going with him career-wise, and they will spend the entirety of their career dealing with a girl who just wants to yell at them for the <laughs> girls that they're around. And I've seen it a million times. And to me, this seems like the greatest uh, waste of your potential that I could possibly imagine for yeah. you to be at the height of your career and you're just being tormented by this woman. Yeah, you no, know. for sure. I could. I, I listen like like I'll just say it like the relationship with Lana got pretty rough. Well, let's be real. Was this ever like a sincere relationship on your end? Because it, it, it to me, it always kind of seemed like a clout grab. And I felt like you were always kind of trying to talk yourself into thinking or into like fooling the world into believing that this was for real purposes. But I don't, I feel like you guys were never really like that clicked up like that. Right. I think once again, it's just complicated. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think, I think, I think, uh, me and Lana um, became like real allies, real partners. Cause as we know, love, like real love and real relationships exist outside of just that idea that you're going to be together forever mm -hmm. or that this, you know, this, this like soulful connection of love. And like, it's great when it's based on that. But I think we found a, we found like a partner in each other of two people who kind of had been through the ringer and we're going to be there to kind of like support each other. Mm. Uh, it was more of like a real deep friendship, I would say, you know, than anything. And and we still are, we still are friends to this day. But still. she wanted to settle down and have kids and you did yeah, not. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a part of you that's more open to that idea now? Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? A hundred percent. Was it part of the reason why you didn't want to then because it was just her? Specifically? No, no. I think it was a timing thing. Mm. I think in my mind, in, well, also, I, I don't know. I don't know. In my eyes now, it was a timing thing. But like, yeah, they're like, listen, like we 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 had some pretty bad blowouts, bro. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like I real, recall. real, real nasty. Some of them took place on Twitter. Yeah, but there were some lists. But there was yeah that no no that was nothing. <laughs> that was just content, bro. I mean, like real like nasty shit that was like detrimental. You know what I'm really? saying? That could have become a problem, right? And and when it got to that point where you know, for anybody watching this who's in a relationship that's toxic at that level, you really got to start to value and put a put a price tag on your life, your career, your name. You know what I'm saying? And it was getting into some shit where it was where some of that stuff was going to potentially be questioned mm. um, or or put into into flux. And. That's when you just got to say, yo, like, it's just not worth it. It's mm -hmm. not worth the idea of us working this out, this dream sequence where we, you know, <laughs> somehow all this fighting ends and we run off into the sunset together yeah. with these kids and get this house together. Like that dream is not worth it at the expense of our current reality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is this day to day um, fighting because she was she just was not cool with with my lifestyle she was not cool with with other women um which obviously like would seem strange but but for her like that's not what she was looking for she was looking for a a, a true partner that was locked in um and and i just wasn't at the time i was so focused on growing my brand and my career and and all that stuff so See, well sorry but i, I just gotta ask this when i watch your videos which i love Thank it's you. like I'm watching a version of myself because there are enough similarities that it feels like this very easily could be me because we're almost the same age from the East Coast, been through a shitload of stuff, somehow find ourselves at a point at like 40 where we have a lot of opportunities available to us that you could always kind of be on the move. There's always exciting new people to hang out with, exciting new content to make, new bags to pick up, new sponsors to work with, new people that have brands that want to fuck with you, et cetera. And it's like at a certain point around 2019, around the time that I fell back on partying, I kind of said like, okay, 
I'm going to really just focus on grinding this content and I'm going to make my life way less social. And I don't know how much of this was like something I was cognizant of, but then obviously having the kid kind of like further forced my hand and like pushed me into a lifestyle that slowed down a lot. But then I see your videos and I'm like, oh, my life, if I had kept my foot on the gas, would be a lot more like this, where I'm at some fucking beer garden with Karina Kampf or whoever the fuck, and you know, you're just constantly on the move, doing different stuff, and then I see moments where you're in bed, uh, you know, talking to the camera, and it's like you've been on the road for two weeks or three weeks, and you're you're exhausted, but you're having a fucking blast. But also, you being forty. There's part of you 38. where 38, you said 40 in video. Okay. I thought you were actually 40 when I heard you say it, but there's part of you that is like, fuck, something is going to have to change. And it might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. And I might be able to live this life for another five years, but chances are that you're just not going to be living this life in 10 years. Right. And I feel like that's something that kind of weighs on you, even though you are taking the maximum advantage of the situation that you're in right now. But there's part of you that knows at some point you're going to pivot away from being a YouTuber. You're going to pivot away into whether it's business, whether it's family, whether it's something different. Like, am I, am I correct? That that's something that weighs on you a hundred percent. No, it all. And by the, it, it all weighs on you. That's the thing is like, is like, it's a lot, every, for all of us, like this isn't a me thing. Life is just heavy, bro. Mm. It's just really fucking heavy, bro. I mean that. And, 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 you know, a lot of that shit seems glamorous. And I want to, and I want to, and I want to say this. Man, just, just looking back, people, a lot of these dudes are doing cool shit. But I'm doing real cool shit, bro. Mm. Like, re I really mean that. Like, on a global fucking scale. And, and a lot of this shit doesn't even get shared. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've had, bro, I've had nights out in uh, Gold Coast where I'm getting on the elevator at the Langham. And I see a dude get off with security. And I turn around and look. And he turns around, and he looks, and I go, Dave? And he goes, Mike? Dave Chappelle, getting off the elevator at the wow. lane. He goes, come to my show tonight. I got a show in Brisbane. You know, come up. And I got these two Australian models with me, and we go up. His manager hits me, come to the green room. It's just me, uh, us three. Come to the green room after. We go in. He's got a red room, not a green room. He keeps the, the lights red. He thinks it, like, calms him down, whatever. We sit there, and he's, man, what you guys are doing in the podcast? You know, I'm sitting there, and I'm, 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 trying to understand my life at this moment mm. like i'm sitting in australia like in brisbane australia in another world like years away from where i came from as a drug addict but that's you know why you stay in nice hotels because you might run into well, dave chappelle maybe, by accident right, right? You know? but i'm but i'm sitting there and he's you know he's he's got his drink and we're just kicking it talking he's playing me unreleased podcast with him and kanye and bill murray and and talib kwali and i'm like what is going on and i say i'm sitting there with him for two hours that dave do you want to go and get a bite to eat so we call this restaurant in brisbane they got these big wagyu steaks it's one in the morning we'll open back up for y'all they bring all the chefs in dave rolls with this massive security detail four sprinters all the security because he's gotten run up on in south africa and he's gotten they try to stab him in la all this shit wow. and i'm sitting there eating this fucking steak with Chappelle, and we're talking about addiction and opiate epidemics in ohio and my book and all this shit and i have this then we go out after that to a club and i have this long you know six and a half hour you know, adventure with Dave Chappelle and just me and him and 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 just spending the night just having a fucking good time. And this right? never made it to the ground. I never made I mean, you know, you never I'll took say a selfie? like I took a selfie with oh, him, God. but like but like, you know, never like oh we partied. I never talked because because once you start to really make it a big thing, once you say, Oh yeah, Abel says what's up to me at his release party or this happens or that, like once you start to turn it into it, the mother will stop talking to you. They're mm. just cause they're gonna be like, Oh, he's out here talking. So I try to but I'm 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 talking about this one just to illustrate you know, this this very interesting scenario that I found myself in over the past, you know, five years. And 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 of course, shout out to Logan and shout out, shout out to all the people that have that have collaborated with and 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 yo, I owe everything to Logan for for taking a chance on me and putting me on, right? And and what I've done with it and how I've run with it since then is on me. And I, and that's where we're at, right? But I've gotten to do some shit that's just really, really crazy shit. And the list goes on. I mean, we've we've been the in zero gravity space, you know, in a, in a dive bombing, you know, 737, we've been taking private choppers to Stonehenge and, and, and I've been to, fucking, you know, I've spent so much time in Saudi and all of these places, these new world places that are just so great and met so many cool people that anytime I, I, I start to feel like I'm being pressured out of that lifestyle, it scares the fuck out of me because this isn't some 
average everyday shit. Like the access that I'm being given, you know, by way of the relationships that I've been able to create and by way of all the, 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 the community that I've been able to build and all these things are very special. And I, and I feel so blessed and so, so, you know, humbled by the experience and the ability to talk to these people. Like, like even on the podcast and like getting to chill with Kevin Hart and getting to, you know, talk yeah. after hours with Erling and, and Shaq and all these people that I've been able to come in contact with by way of this beautiful thing. It always scared me to be like, dude, I'm going to step back now. Right now, bro, that Chappelle shit was six months ago. I'm doing shit now like that's equal level. You know what I'm saying? I'm opening burger shops in other countries, bro. I got I got them rolling out government visas for me, putting me on private planes without Logan. None of this is Logan shit. This is just me now. I'm on my own too. You know what I'm saying? Doing real fucking shit. So whenever I start to feel the clamps of that, you know, aging that like going quietly into that into that slower period of life, it scares me a little bit. Cause it's like, I could imagine being a business guy. You always hear people just talking about their real estate investments and shit. And like, you're, you kind of think like, well shit, I got money and I could like do some real estate shit. But I get it, I bet if you were to ask every single real estate guy, would you rather be a millionaire who makes YouTube content and like gets to party and travel the world and constantly interact with new and interesting people? The average real estate guy would say like, no, you should absolutely keep going with that lifestyle no, because would... anybody can buy an apartment building. Right? Well, the weird thing is from everything we know, like the, uh, what is the Drake lyric where, where he talks about athletes, like they want to be, we want to be them and they, be, yeah, yeah, and they want to be versa. us. It's very strange because I run into these family types all the time. Like, and I, and I, and this is like really the separation that I talked about earlier between like really being out here in the real world versus the appearance of being out here with these streamers and all these, these kids that are on the come up. Like I'm, I'm really with these motherfuckers. Like I'm with them, you know, like if we're, if we're talking business, we're at, you know, Brentwood country club, like talking about some shit or I'm on a G five on the way to fucking Spain doing it, whatever. Right. They're all in their mind. They look at what I do and they're billionaires, bro. And all they want to do is talk about the shit I'm doing. Mm. Like, like I'm trying to sneak in a question wherever possible. Like, yo, how do I get to your level? They don't want to talk about that because mm. in their mind, like this is the cool shit. Tell us more about this girl. Tell us more about that. Cause girl. to them, to you know them being like, rich is the default. Whereas having a bunch of clout and being able to constantly have new and exciting experiences. And that's the thing is even the richest people on earth are sitting around watching fucking YouTube videos of guys who have 1% of the money that they have doing crazy shit and doing pranks and stuff like this. Like yeah, yeah. this is what people do is they watch fucking YouTube. Like it's just the reality of it, you know? Yeah. But it's just, it's just, it's just weird, dude. Like it's just been a really weird thing. And I don't know that like. Because you saw me at the end of the video last week where I talked about being exhausted. I got a lot of a lot of physical problems right now that I'm dealing with that really? I haven't taken care of. I got real bad gastrointestinal issues, oh, and wow. uh, I got a right ankle that's completely arthritic um, that I need to have surgically have the ankle removed called fusion surgery. Whoa. And I can barely even really walk on it. You know, I've got – and then, like, similarly in that same vein, I've got Colombian, you know – stem cell scientists like come down dude like come hang out we'll get we'll get you a free fifty thousand. you You've know what i'm good saying? experiences with the stem cells? no i haven't yet because i haven't gotten down there i I've did it one busy. time and i'm convinced it didn't do anything okay yeah some everybody says something different yeah but maybe i just need to do more of it anyways what i'm getting at is this uh like it's all just a double-edged sword and 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 you know once again it, <laughs> Everybody's just going to make their own decisions. I may get to a point where I'm 50 years old. I got no kids. I remember we had uh, we had Bruce Buffer on. Oh, man. The podcast. I saw that. And, like, him talking about choosing to never have kids was, you know, made me feel very conflicted because it's like you were grinding away on your career for all these years, but it feels like you missed out on something and you know now that that window of time is gone and you're not going to be able to do it now. And it was – just sort of like bittersweet sad. just seeing him talk about it yeah yeah it was it was sad and and so like and i and i felt that in the room with him and it was like you know pacino just had a kid he's what 92 yeah and he then just broke got up with the bitch right away right oh really yeah <laughs> see some of these guys are just i mean i one thing i do love delivering to the audience as a message is it's never too late <laughs> for anything yo if you're still breathing the only time it's too late is when that casket clicks you know what i'm saying other than that like 
you got time to do anything you want in this world. Shit gets harder when you got a family, you got a house to take care of. Like stuff gets a little bit harder to manage. But no, as far as East Coast scumbag success stories, yours is definitely up there, man. Yeah. It's like it's just not easy for you to come from the grit and the dirt. And I'm from, you know, realistically pretty humble beginnings, but like you were a real drug addict. Yeah. So that that colors it especially. Like you're not supposed to make it out of that and accomplish a lot after. Well, you're not you know? supposed to make it out of it at all. Yeah. I mean, I think I think like for example, like I didn't also come from an a nasty world. Like my upbringing was, was lower to middle class. Like right. I had a great family. Same. My parents divorced when I was 15, but like it was all normal shit. It wasn't until I, I, be, you know, was 17 and tried Oxy for the first time and started to really dive into that world. Mm. And, you know, led to a point where I was living in New Haven and, and Bridgeport, which are two of the more dangerous cities in the country and, you know, ranked statistically all the time for violent crime. I lived on the fucking streets. I sold crack. I sold heroin. And more than anything was just a straight up drug addict. I was standing outside the methadone clinic, fucking, you know, not, not living for any reason. You know what I'm saying? Just, I didn't want to die, but I don't think I really give a fuck if I saw the next day, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And that was my existence for 10 years, you know? So, um, you know, I mean, and a lot of that shit still haunts me. A lot of that shit is shit that I haven't really processed. A lot of post-traumatic, a lot of surgeries, a lot of, you know, bleeding out, a lot of that type of shit. And it really does. It really does reshape your perspective, you know? Definitely. But uh, I, I want to like uh, turn it over to Remo one time because I feel yeah, like sorry, I haven't, well, I haven't nah, acknowledged cool, Remo at all. But you I'm guys, just wondering, y'all got history, so I'm just really just soaking it in, just listening to you guys. But yeah, uh, yeah I got questions for sure. Yeah, but I don't want to. Anyway, uh, this is Remo. Yeah. No, I know. I met <laughs> him earlier. I met him earlier, and I'm, I, I was excited to hear the stuff, the the questions, and talk about that. And I I do once again want to apologize to the audience a little bit because I, I I really am a little bit fragmented. My mind has become a little bit fragmented and I jump around a lot and I, I, I think I have a lot of good stuff to say, but unfortunately I, I'm, I've lost track of a... No, that was beautiful. No, that, you, you, you love to have shit. somebody Don't on shit. the podcast that'll just hit you with an hour-long <laughs> intense fucking analysis of exactly where they're at in life. Yeah, That's very valuable. No, we needed that. We needed that. Okay. All right, so do you hate Dylan at this point? There's never a day where I wake up hating anyone. That's another emotion that I'm completely unfamiliar with. I, and, I, and I truly mean that. Like if I there, ever, 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 I don't feel hatred. I have some uh, understanding of jealousy. I have some understanding of those type of emotions. Very light. Because if I really want something, I'll just get it. As opposed to hating on somebody who has it, if that makes sense. Um, so no, I don't. I don't hate Dylan. I, I am... Uh, I feel bad for him. I feel bad for him. I think um, in the sense of what, though, I think just like all of us, he's probably been through some shit in his life. That's created a, uh, a, 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 a human that is kind of filled with with hatred, a human that is kind of filled with um, sadness. You know, I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of. Uh, I think there's a lot of faking that goes on in our space. I've always been straight up. I'm not the happiest person. I've dealt with a lot of d depression, a, t a tremendous amount of anxiety in my life. I wake up every day and have to face that battle. But there's a lot of people out there who who will claim that they're they love. I love my life. Like look at my fucking life type shit. But like you can you look at that man. You know he's got some he's got some flaw, real insecurities about himself. You know what I'm saying about his worth, about his his, his who knows what it is. But you, you think it's that? You don't think it's just boxing promotion cuz that's that's one thing i was saying too like with with logan being in the wwe a lot of the stuff that he does people can kind of like you don't know if it's real if it's not because a lot of the shit that's going on is like 20 percent fake or you know a lot of people really can't gauge like all right are they doing this for publicity is this to sell the fight but that's why people are excited about this Logan and Dylan shit is because it feels so real. I'm not sure yeah. if there's any elements of it that are fake, but at this point in time, it's very hard to get yeah. people to give a shit about an influencer boxing match because there's so little actual animosity wrapped around these fights, right? Yeah, no, it's very real. Yeah. The hatred is very real. There's no, there's no fakeness. No, no, no. From a, from a more simple standpoint, leave all my psychoanalysis out of it. Like, this is a very exciting fight. I'm actually going to be commentating out there and oh, wow. there's some lead into it. Um, and, and yeah, they, they, they hate each other. I, the, the only reason I brought up the thing with Dylan is you can tell he has so much invested in these numbers, like, like, and, and this whole clout thing. And if you think clout can ever be healthy as a thing to attach yourself to, to, 
to represent your value in life, you're making a massive mistake. Mm. Like, and, and that's a, that's a struggle we all have to deal with. View counts start dropping. This happens. Do I suck? Am I, sh you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and the, the reason I say that with him is like, he'll have a tweet that doesn't do so good. And he'll put out like two or three tweets after like, yo, don't worry about that last tweet. I'm shadow banned. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like he he he's so entangled into it right now. It's so new to him this idea that he's like crushing it from a cloud standpoint that it's it's really in his mind representing him as a person so much and it's a it's going to be a real come to Jesus for him when this fight's over and his numbers go back to nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's and and I I just hope as a as a fellow human he, you know, he, he understands his self-worth outside of, of that because I'm sure, but like I said, I don't hate him. I don't, I really, I'm sure he's got redeeming qualities like everybody else. I know he's a, he's a, he's a great grappler. I know he's a world champion, uh, jujitsu, you know, um, grappler and, 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 you know, I do have know some people who know him and have never really had terrible things to say about him. So, I mean, you know, it, it, I'm kind of just stuck in the middle of it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And like, obviously I'm going to ride for my boy and, and that's it. But like Logan has to win this fight. Like out of all the fights he had, this is the one that he has to win. Like, Oh yeah. Like, I, he I can't didn't even think about him losing it. Yeah. yeah. That's not going to, that would not be great. I don't even know what that scenario looks like. I don't even like to imagine that scenario. It's like, he has to win this one. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, do you guys see a world where that doesn't have, like, do you see a world where like you, we've seen some sparring. We understand like, you know, power. We understand. First and foremost, do you guys think that Dylan Dennis is showing up to this fight? That's another question I was going to ask you. <laughs> is the only thing that could stop him from showing up the fact that he's dealing with all these lawsuits, apparently? So let me ask you guys that question. What do you guys think about the lawsuits? From, coming from her, I think it's totally fair. I'm not surprised that she did it, and I would think that almost anyone would do it in this situation, and I think that he probably should have thought about that before he went off the f***ing deep end. All right, so what I heard is, all right, what I was watching, because I was doing some research on this yesterday, he said that uh, the stuff that he's posting, he's just le leaving it up for speculation. He said he's never once made a post saying that she's a hoe or anything. So, like, he's saying that he shouldn't really be getting sued for anything. All he has done was post public pictures and stuff. I'll just say it like this because I don't, because this is legal shit. Then he's got nothing to worry about. I yeah. mean, if every single photo that he's posted has been public, then he's got nothing to worry about. I feel like her legal team at a certain point is going to be able to figure out that some of that stuff was not hey. sent out into the world by her and that that's where it might get complicated. I mean, for if sure. every single photo he posted was public, then, you know, he's got nothing to worry about. But regardless of that, I've watched these videos recently of like these like crazy, like angry <laughs> podcasters. Like I can't remember this one dude's fucking flipping out bro like going crazy i can't remember what his name was but why oh it was like why logan paul is like the worst person on earth he was uh -huh. screaming this piece of shit. i backed him like screaming going nuts um he, him and a lot of other people get into this whole thing about like whether it was right or wrong for this lawsuit to happen pre-fight and how dare logan how dare logan threaten the sanctity of of shit talking before a fight with this fucking lawsuit what kind of boy do you have to be and i'm watching it and once again like back to the the idiocracy of this world we plan it ain't logan's lawsuit yeah right he didn't it's have not to do his anything. lawsuit he didn't file it so i'm sitting there people are, i got a text from i'm gonna just say it i got a text from miles o'neill the other day shaq's son i love miles okay. great kid he said y'all don't fuck with this lawsuit shit. <laughs> he said that's fucked up and i said yeah, no it's fucked up that logan did that i said first and foremost text logan yeah why the fuck are you texting he said no that's your man i said bro this is another thing i want to kill all these fucking bullshit on the show today motherfuckers think we're just connected at the hip the dude lives on neptune bro right. literally in the middle of a fucking island that i never see i see him once a fucking month to do some shows get a check-in weekly and that's it so you'll just bank a bunch of podcasts yeah, it's not we like bank you guys show, are, we bank right. shows we do some you know real-time shows whatever and like we talk here and there but like dude my show doesn't have him on it he's doing his own world with prime he's got his fiance all this shit this idea 
that that anything I do in my life is influenced whatsoever by him or vice versa is is fucking insane. But he's a little bit harder to get to. So people see you and they're like, oh, yeah, they, Michael yeah. respond. So For I'm going to sure. hit Micah. For sure. So it's like, so so he texts me and says that. And the, that's the first thing I said, like text him about it. And then second of all is like, bro, like it's not his lawsuit. Like he's not the person that filed the lawsuit. He's like, this was a decision made by the person that is listed in the fucking legal document as the lawsuit. So then people say, well, yeah, well, you know, he's, uh, he's using the lawsuit as leverage against Dylan in the fight. And that's fucked up. Mm. So it's not fucked up that Dylan's using his girlfriend's body count Right or his fiance's body count, which but, is but not which even because it, does, it doesn't appear that there's any kind of information about that. Right? right, but 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 the fact that he's using this perceived situation, right, which is not Logan's situation, so he's using this this spinoff to promote the fight. But when Logan uses a spinoff situation from him to promote the fight, it's hands off. Right, like how dare you utilize this, something that is not, you know, we don't agree with. You know what I'm saying? So it's just really just Logan can't do anything right. That's the thing. Like at the end of the day, that's what we all have to admit that he's never going to short of the stuff he does in WWE. Like outside of that, bro, there's always going to be a video of why prime is the worst thing in the world. Mm. There's always going to be a video of like why, you know, this X, Y, and Z because people are just haters, bro. That's just like at the end of the day, that's what it is. And, and obviously there's like been a bunch of other shit. Some of it, has merit to it. You know what I'm saying? Like the crypto thing, those questions, like asking those questions, that's fine, bro. Like, I understand that. I understand that those questions being asked, right? Yeah. For sure. He deserves everything he's ever gotten in terms of the crypto shit. But for sure, Nina doesn't deserve any of the shit that she's taken. And that to me, there's just certain lines that if you cross them and to me, like involving an innocent woman in the boxing match promo to such an extent. Now, if he had posted a couple photos of her and left it alone. I wouldn't be so offended well, by it. Well, you that's know? what happened. It's the yeah. consistent over and over and over. And the fact that he seems like he's never going to get sick of it. That to me is the part that I think is why I'm, I'm in her corner when it comes to the lawsuit. I think that she's doing something that I can get behind. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it was relentless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just a relentless slaughter of, of, of shit. And so, and so like, it's, you know, there's this past year has been tough. I've been through, I've been through five years with them of, you know, differing levels of just, of just craziness. Like I joined, you know, six months prior to Tokyo, I was with him through Tokyo. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Which, which arguably is like the apex of all shit, right? Yeah, like right. in terms of controversy for the internet in general, let alone just him. Right. So I was with him through that. I saw that I was with him through, you know, various other allegations, various other, you know, things. And this past year has been tough because one, I've been roped into a lot of them, mm -hmm. which which I had nothing to do with. You know what I'm saying? Which has been fucking annoying. Like between between the crypto shit, between now this, where where I got Dylan resharing pictures of my fucking girl who's who's doesn't do anything. She's the sweetest person. Like, and she's got getting text messages from people like, yo, why is she doesn't care, obviously, because she's like, dude, I've never like I took a picture with this guy at the club. What the fuck do you want from me? Uh, you know? Yeah. But between all that and then and then all the way back to like really with like George and shit. You know, and mm -hmm. like, and like, it's just been a long year, um, where, where I've had to really question my own desire to be attached to something that's so flammable. Mm -hmm. Cause I know him. I love the kid, bro. I really do. And I, and, and, and he is not perfect. But there's been moments means. where you thought like, maybe this isn't worth it. Maybe I don't want to be a part of this anymore. <laughs> Honestly, not really. No, not really. Not not moments where I was like, no, I don't want to do because I love doing the show. We love doing the show. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But 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 like you 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 at least have to you at least have to be able to empathize with what it's like to always be, you know, next to that flame. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And there's good and bad that comes with it. And I and you know, there have been times where I felt like maybe I, I think you know, the, the good of it at this point has kind of maybe like from a, from a brand's perspective has kind of been 
bled out. You know what I'm saying? Like, like whatever personal branding, uh, you know, and, and personal growth I'm going to get out of that relationship is done, has been done probably for years. Now. But you don't want to be the kind of friend no, who but it's not rides I, with somebody during the part of the, their career where it helps you. And then you're kind of out of there once it stops it's being beneficial to you, right? It's not that I don't want to, I can't, right, I don't yeah. have that in my body because you see it constantly and in the creator space and it's fucking lame sure, as fuck, right? For sure. Nor, nor do I believe that to necessarily be the case long term because right. he's a fucking, he's a, he's yeah, a he's rocket not going ship, anywhere. bro. I don't you care if he's saying? scam. 50,000 people and if his girl fucked the whole football team it does not matter he's Logan Paul at the end of the day he's still gonna be able to do whatever the fuck he wants it's it's blatantly obvious to me that all this shit might be big controversies it doesn't matter he's still Logan Paul and you're still Mike and like certain people when you get to a certain stage in your career it just doesn't matter and that's not Th- that is so obvious to me with Logan that he's going to be fine. Yeah. That it's like, I, I can't even consider the idea that any of this stuff affects him in the long term. He's just, I mean, he's, he, and he's even not even like in thinking phase. And, and his thinking phase is now like, are going to look different than they used to because, like, right now he's in execution phase. Fight WWE, fight WWE yeah. Prime, right? He's going to exit for Prime. He's going to make billions of dollars, literally. Mm. And then he's going to go back into thinking stage, right? The difference now is when he goes back in the thinking stage, he's he's um, going to do it a little bit more responsibly. I think I think I think the biggest issue is he he was just chewing on heavy shit that he couldn't execute on. And that's and that's unfortunate, but but not morally reprehensible in the way that it's been pushed out. The narrative has been pushed out. I've been a part of every single thing, you know, up until he kind of moved away. And now I don't see as much of it anymore. But but. You know, there was never a time where anything was done, anything was done out of a desire to quickly get money or to, or to, to, um, to malignantly like, or, 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 you know, maliciously hurt someone. Right. And once, once in the light, everything will look, you, people will be very surprised how, pretty things look when they understand all of these things because now that the nft shit thing doesn't seem as hot as it was it's just a lot easier to look at it and be like oh you willingly scammed your fans you're forgetting that everybody from phase banks to rice gum to like everybody who was big in the creator space i'm sitting there feeling like a fucking idiot because i (laughs) waited to buy a crypto punk and yes i ended up losing like 70 grand or whatever on the crypto punk that we buy but i mean at the time, that did not seem obvious at all, you know? Yeah. No, that, that space has just been a mess and, yeah. and has caused a lot of trouble. But, I, but it, you know, like I said, it's just been a crazy year and, and you know, there's been casualties and, and you know, it's been, it's been wild. And, and uh, for me, a part, a part of it is just like, like you said, I'm, I've been just trying to get back to like really just grinding content and just like kind of keeping my nose out of all that shit. But is there a part of you that thinks that the, the vlogs, the weekly vlogs might not be the future of your content? Cause I always like the direction you went with that because you're part of a huge podcast. So many people, their impulse is like, Oh, well, I'm gonna start my own podcast. And to me that when you have like a, a dope podcast where you have a bunch of hosts and the, the podcast is all about the energy of those people together. And then you break it off and create another podcast. Inevitably, there's just not going to be as much energy putting into the prime product. And I feel like you probably have some kind of business arrangement where you couldn't just go start some other no, podcast, but I, the, the vlogs are a great way to bring something very different in terms of content to the table. And I appreciate the way you've done that. Thank you. And I, and I love the vlogs, but they're, they're, they're a tremendous amount of work. And so basically I re- I always remember maybe three years ago, and I, I I always remember when you said this. You said uh, this is right when Impulsive was starting, mm-hmm. and you and you said um, that podcast would not work without Mike. That's what you said. Oh, but I this agree. Is, yeah, yeah. No, but but this is like verbatim. And, but it and, took and, people a while to even like you in the first place because it felt kind of like, who is this new guy? We don't know him. Why is he talking more than Logan? That was a little bit. And I remember even the first time when I went on Impulsive and I and I met you and I was thinking like. Oh, I kind of like this guy a lot, but I also am kind of like not sure if I like him because I don't know if I really like, is this guy kind of like a, a swindler or is he actually just like a dope ass dude from the East coast that I feel like I went to high school with, but I, I pretty quickly was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, I actually do like him because it's very hard for me to get over that hump of like, 
who the fuck is this guy when yeah. I meet somebody? You know, it's just like I'm, everything in my brain is set to like, no, I don't fuck with random new people that I'm just meeting. <laughs> so it kind of took a little bit for me to get past that. Yeah, you give me these squinty eyes. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Who like, is I, this I'm guy? not You're talking so about sure. Percocets and what the when fuck When you first is this? got with Logan, were you his day to day manager? Like, what was No, no, I was doing shit with him on, on the business side and um, was also just like kind of, there was this like, joke or perception that was like his babysitter you know what i'm saying where yeah. i was like just making sure he didn't do fucked up shit but i just quickly became a part of the content because you said that you were kind of brought in to be a voice of reason or to be able to say no to shit and stuff was that partially because his star was shining so bright especially at that time that it was like there was nobody in the room who was willing to tell him no well yeah it's fucked up because i i classically have gotten this label of yes man mm. um when in reality there's never in his existence, and he'll attest to this, manager Jeff will attest to this, anybody that's close to the camp will attest to this, there's never been a person that's been more of a no man to, to him than I have, mm. 100%. I'm the only motherfucker a lot of times. There have been others. I'll be honest, George had, you know, would have good points that were that were based in a, you know, a, a morally, you know, conservative standpoint, like future facing and so on and so forth. But I'm always, you know, he, he comes to me with, still not as much as he used to but he still comes to me with you know creative and shit like that and and certain life choices and stuff like that and i always give him big brotherly advice that's mm -hmm. kind of what i was i was he never had a big brother he was always the big brother and he yeah. he got famous at a time when he was like 18 years old but the reason why the reason why i brought up the, the podcast thing and what you said is not to <laughs> to a horn or like drive that into stone again um it's because i don't have that agreement on the podcast front Okay. Like I can go do, I can start a show tomorrow. In fact, we're at a point where he, I think he knows and everybody knows that if I do that, it just drives ancillary uh, uh, traffic back to our show. Like it, it, a rising tide is, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it I mean, you look at Nelk, Steiny wants to start a podcast. They facilitate it within the Nelk empire. Full send. He's going to promote happy dad. Like, yo, give me a bottle of prime. Let me drive this shit because I'm, yeah. I'm out here and I'm causing no, I'm saying shit that by the way, maybe I wouldn't sound impulsive. Maybe it's not great for a Kevin Hart episode, but I can really talk my shit. Mm. The problem with me not reformatting into this saturated podcast world is I'm fucking good at this shit, bro. Like I could really, really like I can I can devour a three hour podcast. Mm. Give me six hours. I could do this shit all fucking day. I study my guests. I know my shit. I'm 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 well versed on everything from from hip hop culture to science to fucking everything. I've traveled the world. I've been a drug addict. I have life experience. I know how to do this shit. Like this is my world right here. This mm. is where I should be. And so the reason I haven't is because. Honestly, I'm I got comfortable in the vlogs. I got I have really good brand deals. I have really good brand partners. I make a shit ton of money. And then now that I layered Snapchat into it, it's been it's been insane. Mm. Like the Snapchat shit has has really every time you bring it up in the vlogs and I just think about the fact that I have not been chosen for the Snapchat program. I don't know what that looks like. I feel Me like either. they're opening the, the doors a little bit, but I mean, dude, I'll have days. I mean, I did 30 million views yesterday on Snapchat. I did a hundred I've had multi like quarter billion view months on Snapchat where it's like how many followers you got? Only like 400,000. It's their algorithm. Pro Why their do algorithm I have a million and I don't have this fucking yeah, program? I God know. damn it. <laughs> you're talking about like, oh, I made so much money. I could pay my fucking mortgage off of putting Corinna on my story yesterday. And I'm just like, God damn it. I got to hit up because my guy left Snapchat <laughs> yeah. and now there's like a new guy. Yeah. So I think I'm going to hit up that guy and be like, His hey. His name's Jim. Because maybe he won't know because my Snapchat guy, when I first got verified on Snapchat and shit, I was posting like my girl and Emily Willis covered in oil wearing bikinis in my bathroom. Well, I got in trouble for that reason. I was yeah. at their headquarters and I had posted a couple pictures of Emily and Sky where they were just like, like I was, I would shoot like a wide mode where it was like my legs, you could see it in the bottom of the frame. And then they were just both looking up like yeah. super seductively. And there was like nothing going on like mm. that day, but, but like, they were like, oh, how did this slip through the algorithm? I will never post another porn related thing if they let me in on the Snapchat monetization <laughs> I've heard the same program. Same story from Scott, everybody. Like, oh, they're yeah, all like, yeah, dude, yeah. you got to talk to so and so for me. And like, yeah. But also, it's a monster, bro. It's a monster. You really got to, you got to tap in and like, like, well, you have a motherfucker following you around, taking pictures of you 24-7. Yeah. 100 slides a day. 100 slides a day. I posted 99 today. 
99. I posted 99 slides today. I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. I'll give you some. I haven't some. looked at your Snapchat since the last time that I hung out with you in real life. But I remember like hanging out with you for a while, then going to look at it, and there's all these pictures of us just hanging out. And I'm like, oh, that's what his fucking guy is doing. He's just taking pictures of us because the Snapchat monetization thing is like, they don't really want videos. They want tons of photos because the more photos you post, the more ads they're going to be able to stick in between it. So he's got a dude just following him around, taking pictures of him. If he's standing there talking to me for 15 minutes, multiple photos with like a caption and shit just to create content out of whatever the fuck he's doing. Well, the good, the good thing is, is it's good for me because if your life is 24 seven, like fueled by like, by doing cool exploratory shit that lends itself very easily to that platform. Yeah. And so when I go spend four days at Oktoberfest with, you know, the biggest German creators, Corinna, you know, my team, whatever, by the way, like everything you do is, is kind of interesting, especially if you're writing about it. Like right. for me, now the thing that's created some solace in my life, that's so far away from drama and all this other shit is, I like doing real, I like doing food and travel shit. Mm -hmm. Cause I really have a, like a burning passion for that. I love like, yo, this is why the United Polaris international first class seat is better than the fucking, you know, jet blue mint first class international seat because the lounge has this access. There's a shower here. You know what I'm saying? And like all of that shit lends itself well to Snapchat. Cause people just read the captions. They watch it. They look like, Oh cool. Like, Oh, this San Ysidro, I was at San Ysidro ranch in, uh, in Santa Barbara, in Montecito yesterday. I went there for the weekend. Yeah. It's like $3,000 a night. I spent $2,400 on a massage, me and my girl. It was fucking like, you know, $1,000 for dinner and blah, blah, blah. I look at the total nut of what that costs. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get three days of Snapchats out of this. I might make $8,000 a day on Snapchat off it because it's such a cool, dope, like picturesque experience. So then, you know, all the travel is a write-off because it's a production expense. You've made you know a quarter million in a month off Snap? No, not that much. No, no, that no, would be no, like no, no, no. if you were busting if every was, single yeah, day. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Because I'll take days off. Because this is the other thing I want to say. Like a big part of my life right now is uh, is starting to turn that corner into living life. Yeah. Because I because I really like the not so glamorous side of it. Like I really have. Um, ignored a lot of real important shit. Mm. Like I get I, I have. <laughs> When I'm not doing this, that's why I really love doing this right now because it's very therapeutic for me because when I'm doing this with you guys, I, this stops. But mm -hmm. when I leave here, like I'll really go back into a place that I don't really like love so much. You know what I'm saying? And um, and so uh, that, 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 that kind of fucks with me a little bit because I have a lot of regret and a lot of, um, a lot of uh, trauma that I've never processed and a lot of stuff that like, you know, the idea that you can see the things that I saw and live through the things that I lived through and that a lot of other people have lived through, um, in this underworld of addiction, this opiate epidemic that, that exists in our country, this underworld that people are just forgotten about and discarded. I call them the forgotten ones. These mothers, warriors, you know, people coming back, veterans of war, brothers, sisters, our people, our people, you know, that are living on the streets and living under bridges and going and getting, you know, buying, buying, you know, water on welfare, which I did, you know, on state and state insurance and going to these hospitals and going to these places and no one gives a fuck about them. Nobody's checking in on them. Families have forgotten about them because it's been years and years and they've given up on them. These people are just, you know, so beaten down and, 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 and existing just to exist. And they don't even know what to do with themselves, bro. And, and having been through that and the things that you see when you watch, you know, people sell their bodies to, to get, you know, enough money to, to feed their vein, you know, and watching that fucking blood going to the needle or watching them light that spoon or watching them hit that crack rock rock. And, and pulling fucking chunks of their teeth out, or I was digging in my nose with a rusty blade, pulling fucking cartilage and blood out of my fucking nose, and you know, laying in the street and having my whole shit ripped open and blood, you know, my spleen taken out. I got broke my femur. I got problems all over my body. Um, that shit doesn't just go away. You know, you make a million dollars, you make five million dollars, you buy a fucking dope house, you you get a cool whip, you get a bunch of hot chicks to hang out with, and you have this assumption that you're gonna fucking manipulate your way you're gonna comfort zone your way out of these demons and these terrors that fucking come to you at night or when you're alone and it's not real that's not real that's not a that's not an actual escape that's not how you actually you know forget about 
all the funerals you went to. That's not how you forget about, you know, the phone calls to your mom or again, you know, having your mom give you a pillow to go out on the streets when you were 17 because people were throwing bricks through your windows and threatening your sister's life and shit. Like all that shit that you lived your life, you got to process that shit. And lately, I think I spent so much time trying to just make this content like, yo, get a hot chick, go review a burger, interview Kevin Hart, go on this trip, make sure Logan has this or whatever. And he's good, you know, and on one hand, it encourages you to, you to live a very full life, but at the same time, it doesn't really encourage you to take care of yourself. And just direction. And just direction. Like, like I put out that book. I put out The Fifth Vital in, to, in 2020. It mm -hmm. has sold so many copies. I mean, really, really meaning like hundreds of thousands of trackable copies, audio books, e ebooks, wow. like just, it's a bit, it was a wild, wild number one Amazon best-selling USA Today best-selling success. And all the other shit I've done, every video, every, you know, cool thing that I've done, every cool car, all this shit that is very similar to everything everybody else has done. And I know that. So I don't really like really turn it into anything like where I'm trying to pat myself on the shoulder all of that shit pales in comparison to that project for me mm. because that project is my life i wrote that book myself by hand for years crying my fucking eyes out right in every single page of that book until i handed it to riley and she and she edited it and proofread it and turned it into what was ended up being published except for the last chapter which is untouched that's just purely my writing mm. and that book is so important and I always value the time that I that I spend with people who know me through that that book versus YouTube, Logan, Lana, whatever, because they come up to me and they're crying before we even start speaking. Really? Wow. Like, yo, you you saved my life. Like I I got your book in rehab when I was three days clean mm. and I'm now a fucking investment banker in Miami because of your book. And I say, it's not because of my book. And they said, that's what started this journey. And it gives me goosebumps to, to really, really not only hear that, but to really truly believe that I've impacted people on that fucking level. And, and, you know, it, that's been one of the, the hardest things for me to get any kind of feedback or criticism on, because that's my story. That's my life. Mm. That's not a piece of content. That is shit yeah. that I really, really lived through. And I put my heart and soul into telling stories about smoking crack while my grandfather begged me downstairs to get him off, off up off the ground when he was dying of Parkinson's and cancer. And I was fucking tweaking in the fucking attic because I was so fucked up on drugs and I wanted to fucking kill myself. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't leave that story out no matter how much it hurt me because I knew that it was going to help somebody understand how dark that fucking path is and also help them understand that there's a way out because maybe your shit isn't as dark as that. But I was there. I would live that shit. And I, that shit sticks with me. It's in my fucking bones, bro. You know what I'm saying? And now when you could see somebody like that step out and make it and, and, and really excel in life, that's a really powerful story. Mm, it is. So Definitely. that so that book to me is is my is my whole being and the reason I bring it up is because I haven't done enough in that space and that fucks with me. I feel guilty right now because I feel like I read the book up until the point where you started to get clean <laughs> and then I kind of like lost a little bit of interest because yeah, I, like I already know I'm what getting clean is like but the fucking harrowing tales of drug addiction were a little bit like I forgot to keep reading it once it hit that more positive <laughs> note which is fucked up. I'm going to go take a piss and give yeah, Remo like a, yeah. a minute to yeah, yeah, yeah. some shit. Yep. All right. Uh, so I know you guys are kind of like no jumper because we've been through our host of a fair share of hosts. Yeah. I know you guys, uh, who was the first two hosts that you had? Me, Logan, Spencer. Spencer. Yep. And then you had someone else after Spencer. I forget his name. Uh, we had Mac. Mac. After, yep. And then George. And then George. All right. Yep, three hosts. <laughs> yeah, so kind of how no jumper is. Yeah. Always rotating. I wasn't even here last time you was here. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what happened with the George situation? <laughs> I got to ask that because yeah. that's what the people want to know. Yeah, um... I can't remember the last time we like talked about it. I know we've been, you know, we've been, I, I think the easiest way to explain it is I think that there's just a, there just was a difference in style, a difference in approach, a difference in people, 
You know what I'm saying? And and I think there were just I think we were just very different people. And George is I've 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 sung his praises every show I've ever done. And he potentially one of the purest, you know, most grounded, conservative, uh, family oriented, loving people in the world. Like just a just a overall sweetheart. Um, and I think like I think like you know, to an extent, almost like, I don't want to say he was like almost too pure for the show, mm. but like, but like he just, it, he would just get like abused by like, by like certain guests. Yeah. And it was kind of like fucked. Cause you got to understand. And was I, it and the I, Shaq episode or Bobby Shaq, Lee? Bobby, like, all, like, like you got to understand it. And I, and I think a part of that was based on like seating and, and also like the fact that he, he, you know, me and Logan are such big personalities. So by way of him not being able to like super vocalize, he kind of, he kind of like perceivably assumed the role of like the beta, which he wasn't, yeah. but like guests would, when they would get like kind of uncomfortable or whatever conversation, they would turn and kind of pick on them. But the, the thing that was fucked up about it was that like, I got a lot of negative feedback, like coming out of the the breakdown there and I always had George's back like if you watch any of the episodes where there was like a problem like I was generally arguing with George's side in mind you know what I'm saying like that the 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 Christianity episode like me and George's call we had a, me and George had Bible reading nights where he would call me and read from the Bible like like this this idea I was really like villain uh vilified in this whole thing as well where it yeah. really wasn't like a a point your finger at one person type of situation. I think it was just a, you know, people were just kind of moving in different directions. And and by the way, like kudos to him. He's got his own show now. It's yeah, going great. Yeah. He's had great guests on. He's been able to do something more aligned with his purpose in life, which is, which is what we were just talking about. Whereas, you know, I'm not doing everything that I can be for the, for the addiction community that I, that I really owe that to, and I need to do a better job of, and he's doing a great job now of, of, of telling, you know, the, the story of Christianity and, Family and yeah, because that was a running joke that he was too Christian to be a part of the show. Nah, that's not. It just that's just not the you case. You just kept bringing it up at random ass times for no reason. It's kind of awkward when you believe in a fucking made up guy in the sky and nobody whoa, else does, whoa, whoa, and then they're just bringing whoa, it up whoa, all the whoa. time. From you me as an atheist, that's my perspective. Do this shit it's right now. It's too much. You're well, over whooping. Well, You're over whooping, George. Nah, but Sorry. I'm saying you ain't gonna do all that with JC, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. shout out, shout out. Uh, no, 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 no fucking Jesus, no! You ain't gonna turn him Mexican. <laughs> yeah. Yahweh, yeah. I'm a fool. No, what am like, I gonna no. do? I mean, you, you, you. I, obviously, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but, like, but, like, you know, I'm a, I am a Christian, and I do, oh, okay. I do, my bad. Sorry. I, no, I and I do uh, devote a lot of my. I'm an imperfect Christian, by the way, because mm. I know even me saying that someone from the right. red pill yeah. community <laughs> is going to get mad about it. But, um, but, but I do believe in Christ. I, I grew up going to Sunday school every week, going to church every week, going to Bible camp. Um, and I'm just not as vocal about it. And I don't mean that in a negative way towards anybody who is, I just, it's just not as big of a, I don't know. It's just not but that's why there's content. Christian rock and why there's Christian rap is because the majority of people who listen to rock music, if there's a whole song about God, they're not going to listen to it because to people who aren't religious, this sounds like a bunch of woo woo and we just don't want to hear it. So that's why or I think that are, or that are religious in the way that I am, which is maybe a little bit. I, I think the way that he's explaining it is semi representative of what the issue was, was just like, I think, you know, there was there was just a little bit of misalignment between the message that we were trying to tell. Like it was a very we, and which, Logan which, Paul is satanic. You know, he's just he is of the <laughs> Illuminati. Like this is just not his world. <laughs> Logan, biggest, I said very nice things about you on the rest of the podcast. So when this is clip for TikTok, don't blame me. No, he'll agree with it. Oh, okay. He'll cool, agree cool. with it. He'll he'll a hundred percent claim to be a member of the a thousand percent. Yeah. That's my favorite. By the way, that's one of my favorite storylines right now coming out of like this whole like you know, revamp of like mainstream media and just like the social media world and shit is like yeah. these, um, these like <laughs> red pill, like detectives who have like really figured things out. Mm. Oh, I mean, they have, <laughs> Oh, I mean, they have everything. Like they, 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 they worship, you know, 
their God, who is Kanye, who also has every, I mean, he, Kanye has <laughs> everything figured out. Yeah. Like I, in, in their mind, this man has really tapped into the ethos of what's controlling this world. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he knows, he knows everything that's going on with the Illuminati. They're, they're every, and by the way, once you get to that point, you got to be real careful because they're coming for you. Mm. They don't like you. They don't like you knowing all those secrets. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they're really like gunning for you, bro. You know, and like you don't want it. These are the t is that going on Snapchat? <laughs> I don't even have like a real reason to put it on no, Snapchat because no, 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 no. I don't have this listen, crazy listen, monetization listen. scam. I don't want to. I don't want to <sighs> even for a second act like like he won't even update his Instagram story because he sees it as unpaid labor at this point because he's making so much <laughs> fucking money off all the Snapchat shit. No, I will just tag me in something. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to act for a second like part that shit's not partially correct. We get, we live in a corrupt fucking space like real bad actors, right? Like yeah. fucked up people, dude. Okay, I hear things. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't mean us in LA specifically, although there is a lot of fucking weird shit that goes on here too. Mm. I'll get into that in a second. Um, but but like there is a lot of fucked up shit that goes on. There's a lot of corporate greed. There's a lot of like, you know, maneuvering and puppeteering that goes on. But like, bro, this this Illuminati and like like situation, like this secret society, and also even more so this idea. I'm just going to go ahead and say it that any of these motherfuckers have a clue what they're talking about. Like, like, like if you're tuning in and you're like, yo, today, Alex Jones is going to tell me his updates on what's new in the world. Mm. You think this fucking meatball <laughs> of a human has any, has any fucking idea what is going on at the highest levels of fucking government and secret society that by the way, I'm not, I'm not saying doesn't exist. Yeah. All I'm saying is none of these people know what they're talking about is that is that crazy to imagine that you're being served garbage by these people who are just creating these fantastic stories for you to leech on to at one point it was sandy hook didn't happen and then it was this and then it was that is the they're turning the frogs gay like imagine imagine you wake up in the morning and and you're and you're that vo like devoid of purpose in life that you're going to watch a segment on the government turning the frogs gay. Well, a lot of these people, they crave excitement and entertainment to such an extent that to have a normal, sane media diet, like being someone who just pays for a New York Times membership and you wake up every morning and you scroll through the 20 or 30 stories of the day and you read a couple of them and that's your media diet for the day. That's way too boring for a lot of people out here who want to hear conspiracies. They want to be told that the experts are all wrong and that actually the things that you haven't been able to achieve in your life are a result of a vast global conspiracy, which is true to a certain to an extent, extent yes. because yes. it is true that the elites have created a system in which you are probably never going to be able to make it in life and they are being massively enriched by your labor. That is true, yes. but there's a lot of people who just really crave that kind of excitement. And in comparison, when you've, when you've been brought up on social media and all of the followers and all of the rewards have been given to people who very much are taking part in this game of entertaining you uh, above all else, how do you go and just become someone who's just going to, and, and, and people watching this right now are saying, Adam, how dare you trust the New York Times? I, I see all kinds of stuff with the New York Times that I disagree with when I read it on a daily basis, but at the same time, I can mostly admit that they seem like they are doing things in pursuit of the truth and that Alex Jones just simply does well, not okay, qualify. Well, okay, okay, I will, okay, I will take the counter on this one okay. just to have the conversation at the very least. I, listen, mainstream media is, is, is cor as corrupt as, as anything else. I think, I think that that's, that that's factually correct. When you look at when you, especially when you look at entities like CNN or uh, Fox news, the corruption comes from the incentives with the viewers. Mostly I would say, a because it, it, it creates a hunt for a 24 seven news cycle. Well, right? it's just, well, it's just, how do you, how do you ascertain which news outlet is the least biased? Right? Because that's where I want to get my news from. Like, like the idea of like, if there's anybody on the right or left that thinks that Fox news or CNN are reliable um, news stations, especially only the opposite of, of, 
is is not reliable, but mine's good. Yeah. But no, I, CN, I, no, CNN is is a woke liberal station that will promote these stories, but Fox News always gets. If you're that stupid, if you are that fucking stupid to believe that Fox News does not pander directly to the semi fringe right, and the and then CNN panders directly to the semi woke left, you're a fucking moron, and nothing's gonna help you. I go to AP. I go to a lot of times. I watch B. Uh, uh, BC. BBC. BBC. <laughs> I, I, I went to say BBC and then I looked and I was like, wait a second, that can't be right? Yeah, what the fuck? Yo, no, but there's yeah, a Jason, lot of things. I'm Jason Love reporting for BBC. Like, who, you know what I'm saying? But like, there's a lot of things where I don't necessarily have this conflicted uh, perspective. Like, for instance, when uh, Russia had their near coup with the guy from the Wagner group, whose yeah. name I'm not going to try to say, P- Pagosian or whatever the fuck his name was. And. It was potentially Russia being overtaken in that moment. And what did I do? I do have to call you out. I went to the New York Times and I looked at what they were publishing and I felt like I very much got a sense of what was going on that was much more accurate than what I was reading on Twitter. And I felt like when I saw Fox News' coverage of what was going on in Russia at that time, I got like a relatively incoherent and and you know a, a viewpoint that clearly didn't want to trigger or upset the large percentage of republicans who believe that ukraine is actually very very bad and that russia is actually fine how the fuck did that happen that's yeah. been one of the biggest that's been and i do want to call you out on coop as opposed to coup i will i will did say, I say yeah, because you made it into a two-door car as opposed to a, 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 a military procedure damn it I, i'm but, trying to appeal to my audience <laughs> who, who also i don't think knows the difference <laughs> <laughs> the way it's spelled. Uh, when the fuck did we switch up with Russia? Mm. Bro, this is all new to me. It, last time I checked, before all this started, th- that was our biggest enemy in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, like if you're a true conservative American, America, real, you know, fucking, by the way, Mississippi, fucking, or Maryland, crawfish, motherfucking conservative American, you hate Russia. Right. Russia, Ru- Cold War, Russia, our enemy, our sworn enemy of the whole world that we that we they had nukes pointed at us from 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 Cuba, unless that's a c- conspiracy. Bay of Pigs invasion, like all of this fucking shit. Fidel Castro, communism. But Biden is giving but, but, money to the Ukrainians, so, so therefore so the Ukrainians must be bad. No, because because I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, and I'm, this is not me saying it. I'm just so curious as to how the fuck we got to this point. Is no one has a problem with the. This is just a thought I had, and you can, you, you can, people can fucking slay me on it if they want. No one has a problem with the five trillion dollar, you know, military spending that we're doing every year. Understand what I'm, whatever the number is, right? Understand the it, it is the little trinkets that we're giving to Ukraine, which is a lot, it's still a lot of money, is nothing compared to this military super complex that we spend our money on every year. Mm-hmm. With the sole intent of at one point going toe to toe with Russia or China or the, the combined superpower that is Russia and China. Right. That is why we're buying all these weapons. Yeah. So when we then go underhandedly, secretly, whatever, create a situation where we could have someone else fight that war for us and we pay them for weapons for them to do it, everyone starts flipping out. Right. I, I could be so far off base here. Like, like this is the part, me giving this disclaimer that won't make it to TikTok. This could be so wrong. Everything I just said could be so wrong, so please correct me as pleasantly as possible. <laughs> you don't have to call me a fucking idiot. I'm, I'm saying I, maybe I don't get it. But as far as I was concerned, the whole time coming up, Motherfuckers were learning to hide under desks in their classrooms with their hands over their head. People had gas masks, underground bunkers waiting for a Russian nuke to take out the United States. How the fuck are we all of a sudden homies with them? I got people on 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 every social media like, yo, Putin's the real boss that motherfuckers should strive to be. But this is like what this is a perversion of reality that happens when you make Donald Trump the president because this is all downstream oh, they, from that. Clearly, they want a strongman president, uh, and if we can't have one in our country, we at least want Russia to have one, it, even if it's at the detriment of our country. <laughs> that's where it all. Yeah. Comes. That's yes. where this is where yes. we're at. As that's people, where it all comes from. And I want and just as one more time, like that doesn't mean fuck that I fuck with Biden, dude. The dude is fucking. 
so old, bro. I'm sliding for Biden. Biden has had a great presidency, and uh, I'm actually working on my pro Biden cheat sheet that I'm going to be using no, at bro, times bro, like this. No, bro, stop. He's so old, but bro. that's the only he's, bad no, thing you could say no, about him is the fact that bad, he's fragile and he's huge, about to die. Yes, that's a huge bad thing, bro. Bro, if you have to open a casket for someone to roll out of and be president for 15 minutes before they fall down, that's problematic. I agree that we should have a strong leader in this country. I personally wish it was somebody other than the two people that we've been given. Given. That's all I'm going to say. I don't even the Vivek dude. I haven't talked to him in person yet. I haven't seen him yet, but he seems like a carbon printout of Trump. But as just, soon as I saw Jake Paul dancing with him on Twitter, I was like, I can't. If you're going to Kodak bop, bop with Kodak or with Jake Paul, then I'm just I'm not here for it. Why can't we just get a likable fucking dude? That's just like a like, no such thing. Nobody can handle the scrutiny of becoming president. Look at Obama, like the most well behaved motherfucker you've ever seen in your entire life. And what, what what happened? Like, they came up with conspiracies the entire time that he was in fucking Do you know what the biggest conspiracy? Because keep in mind, like, fuck the mainstream news for a second. The home of conspiracy is Twitter. Twitter, Twitter yo. Yeah. Twitter, Certainly the least regulated tw- at this point as well. Twitter pre-Elon was, was terrible. But now, bro... It is, it is, it is downright dangerous. Mm. I mean, it's a, it truly is a dangerous place where people are making real world physical threats of violence and those are, and those are going untapped. Like, Mm. like, like real deal fucked up place, right? There's a conspiracy on Twitter. And, and, and I I hesitate to call it conspiracies because at one point a conspiracy meant that it was, that it was centered in a small circle of niche morons. You know what I'm saying? Like that made a conspiracy. These aren't even conspiracies anymore. They're real theories that have been embodied and embraced by a number of people. One of the biggest ones right now, Michelle Obama is a man. Mm. That's a huge, huge theory. And they have little like nicknames. They call her Big Mike. It's a whole, <laughs> I, 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 shit you your not. Name. I shit you not. It's a whole thing. When I so, met him, I think he was Big Mike. Yes, he was, right? I was. I was. So, so, so this is a whole network of of channels that all play together about this situation. I, I can't remember what it was. I think she's like too muscular, her back or something like that. And they they really she's from O Block. They she actually is from O Block. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she is. They That's tr- where she got the the muscle. The yeah. Facts. It's so they out. truly believe, like in their minds, this isn't just a clout thing. That this that Michelle Obama, the first lady of the United States of America, is actually a man. And and it was it was uh, perpetrated or or brought to light even more, or or thought of more by this interview between Tucker Carlson and this and this um, the gay guy, the, yeah. the dude that the, said he slept with Obama. He, that Obama what sucked his dick or something like that, right? Did they coke f- with him and fucked him. No, smoked crack with him. Crack, right? Smoked crack with him and fucked him. And, and by the way, this dude like filed failed you know lie detector tests like all, every, everything. But but this video got. 200 plus million views on Twitter Mm -hmm. when in reality all you have to do is watch a Twitter video for a a millisecond as you scroll past and it counts as a view they're not actually views probably like 1% of the total that it lists yeah maybe like maybe 20 could have got 20 million potentially right 10% if they were being judged by like YouTube standards where I'm pretty sure you have to watch this for like 30 seconds yeah exactly so so it's just such a rampant place and like it's like so the question then comes down to it once again like Jay Z said a wise man told me don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. So, oh, so, so, so am I going to go out there and spend my day going to gump against these people who, 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 by the way, like, I mean this, I wholeheartedly mean this shit. Like statistically, let, let's go head to head. Some of these people, I mean this, I would love to sit down in front of a doctor with you guys. Some of these people who have IQs probably in the sixties and seventies, <laughs> these are some of the dumbest motherfucking, you know, mouth breathing morons on the world. The, the, the idea that I'm going to then go and try to <laughs> right size or or recreate this world and 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 argue a, a side against these people at a 131 IQ, I'm going to go up against these fucking idiots. In what world does that make sense? You know your IQ? Yeah, I do IQ tests. All, I still do IQ tests all the time. I've never, never been done one. I'm talking about them. If I, if I had a 139, I would be yelling that shit from the mountaintop. No, I'm not that high. Uh-oh. There's definitely people in our space that would smoke me. Oh, yeah. There's definitely, I mean, I mean, I would assume Beast probably has a super high IQ. I'm, I'm, I've said it a million times. Like you, like you could say whatever you want to me. I'm always down for trivia. I'm always down for any kind of. I've seen you testing. saying that. I consider that kind of a weakness for me, though. Like I, I don't have like the random normal pop culture I'm a trivia. Sponge. Yeah. I'm a sponge, bro. You have a really good memory, huh? 
for interesting shit like that, if you asked me like what I ate for lunch yesterday, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you. Right. But I'm sure it was like Sharkies or Takaya. Sharkies. <laughs> I love Sharkies. Bro. Takaya. What do you get there? Uh, they have this like corn corn oh, bowl. I never get street that. corn bowl. I get the one F the, like the regular bowl. Fuego. With yeah, it's like a fajita. Yeah, something. fajita bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, it's all over LA. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah Mexican food and even faux Mexican food in LA like runs everywhere. It's like fancy fake Chipotle. It's like yeah. better than Chipotle, but it's still it's like not real Mexican Sharky. food. It's some shit that for rich rich white people. I mean, have you ever thought about leaving LA? No, because my entire family's here. My girl's entire family's here. I own a house here. My kid is now going to school here. So basically, I have no freedom, and I can never leave. So that's kind of weird. You think I'm leaving? Yeah, but I had some sh some shit happen. Austin, Texas, go go work at the, the mothership. You get, get yeah, job yeah, there. yeah. I mean, I would. I would. I love Austin. But I, yeah, I've just, it's just, I've seen some stuff. In what LA. shit happened? I don't How know. How open can you be? Yeah, 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 no, okay, really, but you, yeah. you've had to deal with some of the negative aspects of living in LA. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've been a little bit, um, I love LA. I love California. I really do. And I love the people here. I've, I've got real good friends here. My family's all on the East Coast. The tax rate here is stupid. Like, mm. that's got to be the big, the only thing that ever fucks with you a little bit is like, bro, the amount of money we pay in state tax is insane. When I go to other places. I go to Hawaii, and I'm, like, overwhelmed by how serene it is and how beautiful it is and how happy and simplified everything feels. I go, I stay in Manhattan or Brooklyn, and I'm electrified by the energy of the city. But it's like, here is just the best place to be to do this. And... I'm 40 years old almost, and it's like I just can't escape the fact that this is the best use of my time and that I have to see how far I can take this shit in terms of what I'm doing. Can we talk about your situation for a minute? Go crazy. Okay, all I'm right, sorry, all right, all right. I just, I, like, I saw all this shit happening, right? And, like, and like, I guess, like, I get to look at it from a bit of a different angle, right? right. As somebody who, who, like I said earlier, dipped my toes in the space. I dated mm. Lana post, you know, post all of her theatrics. <laughs> she was out of the space. She was, you know, very much with me, and that was it. And we never had any kind of problems or allegations or any of that type of shit along the lines of, like, you know, fucking anybody else. They were all, actually, <laughs> the allegations were against me, not her. So, but they were untrue. Um, so I dipped my toes in, in it a little bit. And I, of, I oftentimes thought about like the idea of like being with someone who was able to, uh, or, or who's, who's doing, actively performing, yeah, actively performing wow. these sex, these sex acts. Right. So, but I knew you and I knew that you, you, you were allowed to like, you were just fucking everybody, bro. Well, on camera in a controlled environment. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So I was just like, damn, like this is like an interesting scenario because as someone who like at certain times in my life, like I was pretty much like sure that I would have to be in like an open relationship because like I just, you know, I, it's, it's a bit of work for me. It can be, I'm, I, I don't fuck up, but if anything, I would just run, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But I, but now I've got a pretty good lid on that, on that, you know, side of my life. So when I was watching all this happen, I just really didn't know what to think. I was, I was so, I was so like shocked by, by the decision to, to, by how like seemingly cool you were with it going to like the farthest aspect. Like, like it wasn't like you had warmed her up with like, uh, what's that kid's name? Like El Nino super, the, the, the like little Spanish dude, like with the, with the big dick. He's like, El, El Nino no, something. No, no, no. Sounds I great. I would his, love to meet him. No, but like you just like you sent her straight to the to the um the like the galaxy of, of BBC. You right. know what I'm saying? Like to me, like it, it was like uh, you put her on a spaceship. You sent her into a fucking black hole into an abyss. The the way to ease into it from our perspective would have been like me, her, and another guy doing a scene. Or us doing maybe even like a swap scene with like another couple or right. something. Those would like have some been true K type shit. Right. That would have been a bit more of a way for you to ease your way into it. You ever fuck true K? I've not. That makes one of us. I'm not. I, I was lucky enough I to was, experience this I, the other day. I was hanging out with her and Melissa. Melissa, yeah. Mm, and, love Melissa yeah, Stratton. Mm. Yeah. This was just prior to me and um me and me and my girl. Okay. You know, putting but, things on. Yeah, Anyways, I mean, yeah. when we decided to go in a direction that was more aimed at making it as viral as possible, which it then ended up being like drastically more viral than we thought it was going to be, <laughs> which made that seem a little silly. Yeah. yeah okay. Do you have, okay, do, okay, so do you have any, uh, truly, do you have any regrets about the, the decision? No. 
No, that was great. It was like one of the best months of my life. But uh, sh- from a financial standpoint, or or just from an attention. And standpoint? it was just like it was just fun. It was funny to me. Me and her, like we were incapable of doing anything. Like we would normally like get home and, at night and watch a movie or watch some TV or watch some YouTube videos together or whatever. And instead, we're just like studying our fucking phones, just laughing our asses off at memes and showing each other like all the shit that people were saying about it and stuff. Like we really had a lot of fun with it. There were moments where I was maybe like unsure about what I had done. Like, oh, is this a little too much? Was this a little too crazy? Am I playing with fire a little too much here? But for the most part, no, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't say that. And, and none of that has carried over to where I'm at now. I don't have any resentment about the fact that this took place, which is what a lot of people were really warning me about is maybe this seems good now, but as time goes by, you're going to end up regretting this and this is going to have reverberations throughout your relationship. I don't think about it like almost well, that at was all. Like the, that was like the Tate angle because right. i watched that that was a cool that was cool that you guys got to t- to chat and, and shit. it was weird that he was so respectful and <laughs> nice about it but then the t- the headlines were all like andrew tate destroys <laughs> Adam yeah, yeah. and i'm kind of like okay but like i feel like the story of anything is the fact that he was like weirdly receptive yeah. and like didn't want to pass judgment on it if anything yeah he was yeah. super nice about it he yeah. was like you know not my not my type cup of tea but he's like you know he's <laughs> like but you know i wouldn't do it for myself but yeah uh, you know, you two are grown adults. You make your own decisions, and then you'll live on from there. But what I personally believe is that is going to create a problem in your relationship, whether it's subconsciously or somewhere in the future, where maybe she has seen what it's like to be with someone else, and now she feels that she has the ability to go and maybe do something like it's that like again. Like the Andrew Tate uh, AI, it's like <laughs> you've been programmed <laughs> to speak exactly like him. You can tell that you've watched so much of his content. That's what I'm about to say you're a fan of him. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Andrew Tristan, get a, you can get a no, I can't. <laughs> The same accent. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, it's, okay. it's very, it's very similar. But, but anyways, but yeah, he was. He was super like humbled and just like nice about the whole situation. But, but like, okay, so, uh, was there? And there was no. There was. I, I saw somewhere that you had like a little bit of an issue, like getting back into the. Like you thought about it a little bit from a sexual standpoint when you got back into it, or like was it? Um. I mean, it was a little weird, just like, you know, if I had to identify the thing that made me feel a little bit weird after it happened was just that, like, realization of, oh, shit, she fucked another dude with a really big dick, yeah, and she cock. liked it, which yeah. as a guy, you just don't want to think about Wait, that. Wait, did That's she like a tell very... you that she liked it? Yeah, of course she told me she liked it. Well, I mean, I was like, how was it? Yeah, and she said she liked it. But, I mean, I would compare it to her, the same thing. There's been times where she watched me fuck a girl in front of her and she could tell that this girl's vagina was just sending me through the fucking roof or that this girl's top. Some of these girls, and I know you got head from some of them too, in the porn world, no, it's, no. you will experience head that is not like it's the not, head no. that 99% of women on earth are given out. And I would put my girl towards the top percentile of that category, but she's watched me get head from Carmen Karma and Adriana Chechik and these other chicks who realistically have like crazy unlocking jaw mechanisms. It's like the equivalent of like Usain Bolt yeah. in a race. It's like, yeah. yeah, this motherfucker was born to do this shit. He's isn't genetically it, made funny? for it. Isn't that funny? Cause people always want to ask me questions about like, about the sex. Mm-hmm. And like, honestly, okay, so like, I never want to like seem braggy, right, about shit, but like, like outside of the industry, like I probably put together like probably possibly like the greatest roster of like in that space. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even going to get into all the names, but like, I can put some yeah, pieces you know together in saying? my head like, and it's very impressive. Even yeah, like yeah. weird ones that were like off the grid type shit. And like, just, it, I had a lot of fun back. Probably like day, 80% right? overlaps with my experiences <laughs> in the field, but mine have been on camera. So, so it's, it's, and it's, I've yeah. thought about it. So that's cooler. If you ask me. Well, and I've thought about it. Cause it comes more from the real love for fucking. Yeah. 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 Facts. And so, and so, but the one thing I, I want to say is like, it's funny because Sex, sex, like actual like intercourse is such a like chemistry driven event mm-hmm. where you, you, the two people involved, like when they, women, women are on a, all women, whether they claim to be sub or only subconsciously or whatever are driven by a real physiological or psychological connection to the person they're having sex with. Mm-hmm. That is not able to be faked, replicated, whatever. Men are much more instinct and 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 driven by you know quick acting decision making and so on and so forth so they could just be really horny and whatever it's fine but the idea that 
that two people have this locking chemistry is what really creates powerful sexual intercourse where both people are extremely satisfied. Mm -hmm. And that involves a lot more than just dick and vagina. It's hand placement, ass, hips, where this is going, what I'm saying to you, what I'm holding on to. Am I, am I, is my hand on your neck? Is it pulling your hair a little bit? Like what's going on in the bedroom? There's a lot of tactics to really create great sex. So when people ask me, they're like, yo, Oh, like was Lana, was Emily Willis, like which one of these girls was like the best sex you ever had? My answer is always, it's not anybody in the industry. It's not someone in the industry. It's whoever I was, it's whoever I was really clicking with at the time where we were on a level together. We had really gotten to know each other to a point like we had this real connection like you and Lena, I'm sure have that, have had that mm -hmm. type of, you know, out of body sex. Now, the reason I say that is because head is the opposite. Head mm -hmm. is, head is a mechanical situation where only one person, the man, the horny, non-physiological or psychologically attached man has to be getting pleasure out of the situation. The woman is simply going through a, a tactic. She's, she's not feeling anything, you know, maybe a little turn on. Maybe she's But there like, are women who turn dome into an art form when they have the so, web of spit and they're whipping brother, it around like they're making like artisanal ice cream. That's what shit. I'm getting into. The, 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 like you said, the girls in the space what can you even say? I mean, it's, it really is like, like not to get like too graphic, but there's really, there's no way not to. The, the first time I, fuck, there's a spit that is produced deep mm. in the throat that yes. is not like the spit that is in the mouth. <laughs> Bile. It, <laughs> This is so bad, but it, but it, like you just said, it creates a, a, a palpably like hangable spit. The right? average woman, if she was giving head with this thing floating around on the dick, she would vomit. She would not want anything yeah, to do with it's, it. It's, 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 and, and, and the, the fuck that shit, bro. If Alex fucking Cooper is able to fully describe the Gluck Gluck 9000 for her female audience, there's no reason we can't fucking, I can't talk about this shit. Two plus hours in, I think yeah, the, no the one's even listening YouTube's uh, judges yeah, will be gone Yeah, they're now, gone. Yeah. All right, so, so you're right. Like, bro, I'm just trying to think right now, it's really hard, like, in a committed relationship to, like, give out a, a specific kudos award. <laughs> Cause I feel like that's going to really cause me trouble, but like, that, yeah. but like, yes, like it, I think it's just like a practice makes perfect type of thing. Like they're, 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 they're willing to like do shit. That's like outside, but that's just one small piece of relationship. And well, I've seen like, my girl give me head with other girls. <laughs> and then a week later I get head from my girl again and she's giving head like the other girl. She's you. like yes. picking up little things like here and there, like over and over. She's just figuring stuff out. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So, so fine. If that's where I end up rolling out, cause as you just saw, I was kind of tiptoeing <laughs> yeah. around that conversation for obvious reasons. But yes, if you are locked into a relationship with a guy and you do get a chance, I, I'm not, I never tell anybody to watch anything they're uncomfortable with whatever. But if you want to try to pick up some tactics, hey, I'm, I don't think you should be, anybody should be mad about that. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, I don't think it's like a rocket science situation, but damn, dude, like some people are just fucking. I mean, a lot of people just couldn't comprehend or wrap their head around the fact that I chose to do that because they're like, you already have money. You're already doing fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you choose to do the craziest thing that we can think of in order to get what? More fame, more money. And I guess like part of it, when I started YouTube, I've always just been attracted to the idea of doing the more extreme thing, you know, on social media or whatever. I did the, I just took acid and I remember I, that I tripped on acid <laughs> yeah. in the woods vlog. I did the threesome vlogs before like anybody had ever done that. And I'm just reviewing it on camera, whatever, like all these weird things. And like, to me, I guess I just saw it as like a challenge of like, oh, like, you know, this seems kind of fair that I let her fuck however many guys, but some number of guys as a, as a result of, uh, what I've done on camera and then also just realizing that like I just kind of knowing that I wouldn't care that much and, and but also knowing that I would care somewhat but being willing to kind of like face my fear on that and do the thing that nobody else is willing to do just like the same way that I want to interview the board uh, the booty warrior the guy from the boondocks he was like a he was a guy who was Fleece in prison, Johnson. Fleece Johnson. He was in prison for many years, had a whole shitload of different guys he was fucking, and like he was on the news for having so many boyfriends in prison and stuff. And I heard DJ Vlad say that he wouldn't interview him because he considered him a serial rapist. 
I'm kind of up for the challenge. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I, I just mean, where the I'm idea at. of sitting with someone is I don't believe is a cosign. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we saying. had I mean we had Alex Jones on our show at a time when he was pretty universally hated. YouTube gave us a lot of slack for that. Then was pulled the sh pulled our channel. They did. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. So and 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 you know I'm not I'm not by any means agreeing with with his his you know overall sentiment or anything. But the idea that no one. No, this has been the struggle with being any any kind of like anti free speech or, or pro censorship is the idea of, of placing anyone in a silo is certainly a scary idea. Mm -hmm. Like like because because then they build a base and and they go unchecked. So it's like so like censorship is censorship is tricky because once you do that, you're putting someone into a, com a place of comfortability with their own audience that they they can do whatever they want. At least if you leave them in the open specimen or in the open atmosphere, they can be checked by by everyone. Yeah. Did you beat the cuck allegations? Did you did do you get a boner ever thinking about the situation? Oh yeah, me and her fucked while watching it a couple of times. Yeah, so there's really no denying Wait, is that, that. are you being serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No troll. I mean, I just like wanted to see it when she got the first draft or whatever and I was like, Let, "Let's watch it." And then we're watching it and then we start fucking and, you know. See, see this is the thing. Wait, that was that's true, right? Yeah, I, I can build off of that. Okay. He's heard okay. me say this before, okay. I'm sure. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> that's gay. <laughs> no, that's not. I, as Andrew would say, I'm a. I'm not doing it again. I got it so good last time. He, you know, he, I, you know, you're your own person. Do what you want. Maybe it's not. But I do want to say this. Once again, bringing it back full circle to people just having different views on life. You have your views on life. You're 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 a liberal liver. You're a, a liberal liver. And and and. The internet and social media was not what created swingers. Mm. Like, this shit has been around since the beginning of time. Right, because you're, in... you're around the Hollywood elites and inner circles, and I'm sure you've heard quite a bit so about this, right? that's where I'm right? going with yeah. that. But, it's, but it's, like, it's like, dude, like, go back all the way to BC. Go back to, 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 to the Roman ages. Whatever you want to go back to. I'm sure there was kings doing this fucked up shit. And, like, people's minds are fucked up, especially when you start to... And this is where it gets dangerous it's with porn and with everything, especially when you start to overindulge in, in, in any one activity because it becomes very calm. It becomes very commonplace for you. So the idea that one of these, you know, for example, Dylan Dan is subscribers at 19 years old who, who has never, you know, ever even seen a boob in real life. Like mm. they're just pure, what is it, like incel, like just, just, you know, they're, they're whatever, right? Like they've never gotten a piece of pussy in their life to them. The idea of even putting a tip into a, a vagina is, is the most magical thing ever. And nothing will ever become boring about that. And they could, as soon as they get their hands on one, they're going to fall in love and they're going to settle down. And as long as that girl hasn't ever kissed another man, they will live happily until the end of time. Yeah. But, but, but the problem is, and this is a, this is a bad thing about, about porn and sex in general is once you start to do it all the time and you fucked everybody in the world, you start to, get bored of it mm. and then you have to start exploring shit and this is where some of the weird shit starts to happen and like if i've seen you know semblance of it for me i for me there's always been enough i can do inside the bedroom to spice things up to keep me excited you know what i'm saying like there's fun stuff you can do and also like now i'm moved into an area where i'm creating real meaningful psychological relationships and now i'm getting into this like sex while being in love type of thing that's or way like, better in yeah, the long run yeah for sure but some dudes go in the opposite direction mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and they told me that a rapper that we all know who it is, Rima might have been standing there, so he might already know what I'm talking about, is A, a former killer, and B, gay. And I'm like, oh, so now I know that about this one guy. <laughs> he's gay, and he's got bodies. He's a gay murderer. I mean, that, that's just like really, <laughs> that was a weird feeling to find out these two facts simultaneously about someone that I have been familiar with for many years. From a more macro standpoint, there's a lot of weird shit that goes on yeah. when people reach the apex where they have fucked every vagina. And I don't in the world. even feel like I've scratched the surface of actually doing weird shit because me and her have discussed swinging or going to swingers parties or doing, you know, just different kind of stuff. Like all we ever, all we've done is like a little bit of shit on camera. You know, yeah, like yeah. it's on camera, like yeah. it's for the masses. It's actually like seems way different to me than if me and her were, you know, hooking up with another guy involved in private life, because then that's all about 
pleasure Pleasure. and enjoyment doing it on camera is kind of different because there's a big ass amount of money attached to it that it's just kind of it's hard for me to separate but it is i mean it is worth noting for anybody who who truly does want to live that like conservative traditional conventional lifestyle that that like yes like you know, may, maybe that is what what promiscuity could potentially lead to. I, you know, I'm I'm open to all to all viewpoints. I'm not closed off to anything, and definitely, and I certainly appreciate. And to be completely honest with you, are am somewhat envious of these of these true uh, pleasured conservatives who can match up with a woman and and be with that person and 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 and, and you know really. Um, don't struggle at all with attachment issues or, or, or any of that type of stuff. You know I mean? Kudos to those people. And I don't want to poison, poison that well by any means, but to act like that stuff doesn't exist in the world or, or didn't exist from the beginning of time is, is, is wild to me. So, um, but, uh, yeah, the, the, another thing on the, on the sex side, um, this seems pretty Illuminati. And so that's why I think (laughs) it's an interesting time to bring it up, dude. I got this, (sighs) I've been fucking with these peptides. Yeah, what is that? I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I've been fucking with these peptides, bro. What is how that? is what that? Is well, I'll tell you. It's like this because I never have even Googled because, it. Because okay, I'm a bad, so you know how podcasting. you know how like you know how like people think like that there's Logan's like a party. Steroids? No, there's not even not that, <laughs> but like there's probably a party Friday night where like John Legend's holding the baby and somebody else is like cutting their leg open and they're just dripping the blood all over. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what they think like is happening. But they're actually, it's just a bunch of dudes doing peptides. Yes. Really? Well, I, well, I don't know if the John Legend Legend. party's (laughs) happening or not. I've never been invited to it. And killing babies. Yeah. 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 Or like goats or whatever the fuck they supposedly do. (laughs) But, but they are doing peptides. So, okay. So listen, so like the first peptide, the first like big one was NAD. Right, and everybody was fucking with that. Like Emily Willis does NAD. Like a bunch of people do it. It's really? it's, it's supposed to uh, regenerate cell growth and really and really like bring a bunch of uh, 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 youthful cell regeneration to your body. So basically, you some people micro inject it. Some people get bags of it once you know once a week, whatever. It's pretty expensive, but basically it regro- it, it, it it elongates your your uh, DNA helix, uh, it, which 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 shortens over time and that's how you end up dying this and by the way once again anybody can fact check this and tell me where i'm messing up but basically it helps regenerate cell growth in your body speed it make it more efficient Mm. so it started with this nad right and then i'm going to this doctor i'm getting the nad then i was you know i got started doing a little bit of testosterone because my number was a little low so i layered that and i'm you know a little shot to the ass whatever right and i'm like dude am I Illuminati now? You know what I'm saying? Like, have I become like an elite elitist, like pagan or what do they call? Like, no, you're just a guy injecting testosterone okay, into okay. his ass. So then, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I know a lot of guys like that. They're not Illuminati. <laughs> so then, okay. Cause I want to make sure that we're clear. Cause I don't want those allegations, from which them. full disclosure, I have shot testosterone into my ass, but I was like 21 and I had ballooned up to 280 pounds and I got really into bodybuilding and I basically like wanted to lose all the fat while holding on to my yeah. muscle at the time. So this was like almost 20 years ago. So I just want to throw that out well, there. Well, you were doing a lot probably. Not not a lot. Because my dose is tiny. It's so small. It's just enough to just, okay, because basically, okay. So for, so you don't have worries about what it might be like if you get off it? No, I do. And that's why that sucks. And I hate any kind of dependency. But, but let me. Micro dosing testosterone sounds like a really good idea though. Yes. Yeah, because so let me, I was doing a lot and I was wilding the fuck out. Like I was trying, I fought a crackhead on the street. No, 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 no. Crackhead said something to me. I fucking started fighting him on the street. We're rolling around on the ground. Well, you could do that with any test level. I feel like. Yeah, oh, that should. Like have we could go wilding. do that right now. Yeah. We could just go outside. Okay. But 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 basically, <laughs> Find a bone. your testosterone level is between four hundred and I think like twelve hundred is like your is like your your respectable like poles of the two you know okay. testosterone right. And when I went in, I was at at like 38, like I may have should have been at like 650 or some shit. And I was at like 540. I wasn't even that far off. So I started taking these like micros, but I popped up to like, dude, at one point I was at like 1150 and I was like really trying to fuck. And like, I was just like, when you're on a bunch of tests, you're fucking trying to bang everything, everything, right? That's when I did steroids. Oh my God. I was trying to fuck. You're always trying to fuck. And yes. So it, so it like wakes you up and it like revitalizes you. But basically what you have to do is you got to get your dose right. So then I kept going down. Now my dose is only, I'm on 100 uh, milligrams a week of test 
Okay. Which is which is uh, I do two two a week of point two. It's so little, bro. Or point two five. It comes out to po- to a half a cc total, which is a hundred milligrams. Um, so that's what I'm on now, and it's been it's been good. I I feel good. I've I'm kind of wake up with vitality and like lust for life and so on and so forth. My mind's a little bit clearer, um, but I do think about the idea of getting it off it off of it sometimes. But honestly, like my dose is very low. Mm. Like I could just wean off of it. I got off heroin, so I'm just worried that if I were <laughs> to start doing that, that in terms of filming the porn, that if I were to get off of it, because when I got off of steroids that last time when I was 21, it was like. I didn't think about my dick for a week at a time. Like well, you just lose the, that sex drive so hard when you come off it. Now you, you take the estrogen and you try to do it right and everything, but I'm kind of scared of that experience of like experiencing a high and then a low. Well, the plan is if you are micro at such a low level that you're just going to stay on it. Yeah. That's what Dan Bilzerian told me. And that got me a little worried. I'm like, damn, so you want me to do it forever? Just because we talked about but it. But he's podcast. also, he's definitely on more than me. Oh, a yeah. lot, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So like mine, like, yes, I could probably get it. So anyway, so then I went on that, got on that little NAD here and there. Then I started, then they started bringing me like, yo, try CJC for sleep for REM cycle. And then I fucking, you know, you're, you're going to the refrigerator and you're jabbing your stomach every night before you go to bed. I didn't really do that for very long, but it like helps your REM sleep, right? Mm. So you end up going in the fridge and you just see like all these peptides. And, they, and by the yeah. way, this is like every like, I'm not calling myself one, but this is like every rich motherfucker's refrigerator. Like, really? This isn't like some like just me type shit. Like when you say it peptides. like that, you're making me feel okay about eventually doing it. So I like no. That. Talk yeah. to your medical professionals. Talk to your doctors. Talk to your people. See what's right for you. This isn't medical advice. This is just me talking about personal experience. But I know well, some doctors who will just give you whatever the fuck for you sure. want. That, so I don't know how much talking well, about is going to matter. <laughs> it's more of a disclaimer for cover my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so so. Last week, my doctors tell me about this thing. Yo, bro, it's always like some new shit. Yo, bro, did you hear about this PT-141? I'm like, what the fuck is PT-141, bro. You hear about this shit? And I'm like, no. What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, man. He's like, it's like that other shit that you're doing for the DNA, but for your dick. And I was like, what do you mean? So there's this new peptide called PT-141. Same situation as CJC, subcutaneous needle. It's like an insulin needle, like a mm. tiny baby. Fucking jam it in, right? I'm doing the peptide deep dive when I get 30 home. minutes before sex. So I tried this with my... Fuck, I don't even want to say this about her. Right? I tried this. I tried this with a, with a sexual partner, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Recently. Um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, there's no confusion with me over, like, Blue Chew and shit like that. I've been, a, obviously, probably the biggest promoter of Blue Chew. Huge Sildenafil guy, like, lover of all that, uh, p- p- you know... Uh, performance enhancement in the bedroom right. because honestly like why do i want to show up unprepared when the motherfucker i'm up against is going to take going all out you know what i'm saying like people are people are going to the bedroom prepared nowadays you know what i'm saying whether it's one way or another and i'm not saying they should or have to or whatever but but you know it like people are rolling in there ready to rock bro mm. however they do it whether it's honey you know people are taking that royal honey people are doing this people are doing that whatever you've right? done the honey i've tried everything bro really? Fuck. The honey, I didn't, I didn't, the only like real proven one is like sildenafil and, and tadalafil, which is Cialis and Viagra. Can you just read what it says right here? Mandigo Hall of Fame, Adam 22, the Jason Lee Show, 2023. That's a gay man right there. He gave me that award. Co- why? I don't know. It was kind of weird, especially considering my wife got digged down by another man's Mandingo this, this year. And that's when he chose you to give me the, the award. You should get the cuck award of 2024. That, you know, that would make more sense. I don't know if he had the confidence to give me the cuck award, but he gave me the Mandingo award. I don't know, but continue. So I take this PT-141 <laughs> the other night, right? The problem is you get a little flush. You get your face gets flush. Mm. It's weird. Also, it, anytime you administer anything to yourself with a needle is like kind of strange. You get used to it real fast with the testosterone. Yeah, but you still it's always so easy like to jam it in your. But you're ass. always just like, dude, I'm not. A, I shouldn't be doing this to myself. This is unnatural. You get all that yeah. blubber on your ass. It's yeah. easy to jam. But this is your it. stomach. Oh, I, I, so I've done just, that too with yeah, the growth hormone. Oh, yeah. I used to do growth hormone too. ACH, yeah. yeah. So it's just a little strange. So I so I do it and like, you know, 30 minutes later, my face starts getting real red, and then, bro. Basically, what it does is it works in your brain, unlike sildenafil, which is which is just which basically just widens your vessels in your penis to allow for better blood flow. Because that's what that's what uh, sildenafil and tadalafil, Viagra and Cialis both do. They 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 is it dilate or whatever the opposite is. 
they widen your blood vessels so more blood is able to enter your penis, right? Really? And and, st- and gets and get stuck there. As we age, those blood vessels become constricted or filled with calcium. Who the fuck knows, right? So that's why older men have trouble in the bedroom, right? Like it's going to happen to people. It's, it's like going an to. Andrew Huberman podcast. Fifties or sixties. Yeah. Great guy, right? <laughs> so at some point in your life, you're like you're gonna be like, oh shit, like I'm gonna have to figure this out, right? You, it shouldn't, you know. Hopefully, you're not having that problem early on, but like some people even there too, right? right. In their twenties. But anyways, so I try this and. Basically, it works on actual sexual receptors in your brain, and it works on men and women. Mm. If you had put me the other night head to head versus Johnny Sins, I would have won. Really, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because you were post it, it was my a base, massive rod. My baseline, my baseline is 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 at. Porn actor quality, like I could, I've talked to you about this before. I could go into the space. I really, really truly believe that. Never I'm, seen I'm, your I'm, cock. It just now knowing what you know about uh, what I know about you as a cock, I can't show it to you here on the show. <laughs> well, I wish I, I had just, seen it before then. No, <laughs> I missed out on my window. A, a, I mean, I, I have some videos with with. Yeah, that would be great. Fuck, I'll show you something after. Thanks, Anyways, thanks, sure. so so. Very good. Baseline. Very I'm, zesty. Base, well, no, because it's me and, a, and girls. A lot of people in my space would call that zesty. These gangbangers, you wouldn't believe it. So, <laughs> so does that? So if you so if you watch man on woman porn, that's that's zesty. I don't think THF Bezu would approve of you sending me a video of you fucking a girl. We can consult with the THF board. Yeah. So but, now I can't show it to you until I get clearance. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna tap in. Okay. Wooski might be cool with it. I don't know. <laughs> what about what about Crip Mac? Crip Mac would. Yeah, I've seen him fucking. But he didn't show me the videos of him fucking. They were like leaked without his permission. Yeah, if you text his crib, Mac, he ain't gonna be with it. He would probably be pretty upset with me if I sent him a video of me fucking. Yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't be. He would. He's funny. He's funny. He's bro. a great man. He's funny, dude. Yeah, you should. We, we, we have some great characters. I would love for him to make an appearance when oh, we have How about so, that? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Oh. Dude, I could do it this Please, fucking week. Please, let's line bro. it up. Yeah, yeah, we get yeah, all yeah. easy. Dude. Remo hangs out. Remo's in the field. Well, because, well, because there's, a He's big, ready to die. there's a big food festival this weekend. I would love Massive. for you. Bring Crib Mac. But you know what he cannot eat? What? Think about a hamburger. Think about the thing that goes right next to it. Fries. You can't even say that around him. Don't say that around him. He's yeah. from 55th Street, and that's what his enemies diss him with. It's What's their saying? What's their saying? I'm 55th. Because I, I, I didn't know. Because I didn't know this, but I recently realized that all these sets have their own sayings. I don't like know. Like a dude came up to me, bro, at catch, and he said, "Neighbors don't need no favors." Mm. Let's keep it nifty on 50s. Is that a thing? One of the things that he says all the time. But yeah. I don't know if everyone's saying that or if it's just crit That's yeah, what I'm it's saying hard because to tell. then I tried to, because then, yeah. cause then the rest of the a... night goes on and I'm walking around LA. Neighbors don't need no favors. And Kifa was like, yo, maybe just stop. Like, okay. That's one of the questions I have like, for you. Yeah. What's your relationship with Kifa? That's the dude. Yeah, that's, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's my brother. Great guy. That's my brother. Like, real talk. Like, like, there's a lot of people that I come in contact Roddy with. Roddy Rich's manager yeah. and Facts. more. I was yeah. with Roddy in the studio last week, okay. fucking listening to the new album. The shit is so fire. He's so tapped in this year, like mm. not going out, not doing nothing. I was with him in wherever the fucking studio is at. He's got a point like, to prove. 100%. Mm. 100%. Don't y'all count me out. No, I'm Roddy fucking no, Rich. No, and he's got some shit, some real, real, like, like crazy, unexpected like shit, like crazy shit, like ma shit on there. Mm. Like there's some dope shit on there. He's gone Playboy Cardi. No, but it's where his nails painted. No, but what I no no. no okay. But one thing, nah, because he, you know, he, Roddy's not with any of that type <laughs> shit. <laughs> hey, Roddy's believe, like real, that. a real motherfucker. Right. So, so he, I, I get to come into contact, like I said, way earlier in the show, with a lot of cool people. I get to meet dope ass people, and I get to break bread with some people, and some people become associates, and over the years, some people have become brothers to me. Kifa is my brother. Like, I really mean that. Like, we might as well be blood. Like, real talk, like, he, 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 that, that dude is so tapped in, um, to, to, to life, and to what matters, and to family, and to how shit goes. Like, when I find myself in a, in a dark spot, I always call Kifa, because also, Kifa really comes from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I would assume you you know whose father is and shit like that. You know no. what I'm saying? Like I'm in the dark. Well, 
I don't know if that's my story to tell, oh, but, okay. but 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 Kifa is really 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 like that dude, and I love that lo love that dude. Um, I've known him for years, and we speak every day. We work out together, oh, really? and uh, he's he's super tapped in. I and see the, you hanging out with him, and I'm like, fuck, like I meet so many dope people. And then because I'm on a constant fucking conveyor belt of dope people that I'm having these long ass conversations with on camera, I just don't form the relationships that I should yeah. with people, you know, and I'm seeing that and I'm like, look at Mike being an actual fucking human being and being friends with some random guy in the music industry that he met. That's dope. But he's not, no, but he's not, but the part not a that random I'm, guy. no, but the part yeah. that I'm like not getting into, cause like you should, you could have Keith on the show, like real talk, like, and, and actually hear from him. The, 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 the thing I'm not telling, cause it's not my story is like Kifa is a, is, is LA like royalty, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the reason he's where he is now is cause Nipsey put him on mm. like like he's 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 like not, not, not like you know he did the work you yeah, know what i'm saying but nipsey he was around nipsey co-signed like heavy and that's why he's tight with that's why he was tight with nipsey that's why you know he's tight with wiz he's tight with snoop like all a lot of those dudes that came on our show snoop wiz all those dudes that came on the show kifa got all them mm, kifa okay. got all them those are all kifa you know put together um um you know appearances because he's so tapped into the space with you know he's with yg's with travis with everybody He's with everybody, and they fuck with him not on some industry shit because he's really it's like genuine. a street, like real dude, real genuine, like lovable fucking person. I there's, love that. Too, there's bro. another person that's going viral, not Kifa, but Kifi D. Have you seen? No, you I haven't I heard about any of that. I just googled Kifa's father or Kifa's dad, and it was all, all Kifi D. D. <laughs> so I'm wondering, I'm like, is that his, his dad's Kifi D? That's nah, a weird nah, one. Nah, all right. Right. So you haven't seen any nah, of the Kifi nah, D stuff? Nah, all right, nah. so he killed Tupac. He was one of the guys in the car that got. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he was the dude that got. He just got arrested. Uh huh. Twenty seven years later for the murder of Tupac. And he was a, originally a witness, right? He, he was, was in the car. They already knew he was a driver, but he did a, a proffer agreement because he got caught up on a drug case. And a proffer agreement basically allows you to have a conversation with the cops and tell them all this information and not be able to be charged in relationship to. That conversation, even though that conversation then eventually became public and everybody, they basically made a documentary using the audio so from this conversation. Them? So he ended up writing a book and going on a ton of different podcasts and doing all these interviews where he basically aired out basically the fact that he went and got the gun, that he was in the car. He stopped short of saying that he fired the gun, but he basically made it out as if he was an accessory to it and he was completely involved in it, as if the proffer agreement made it so that he couldn't be charged for this, which is not the case, because he is, in fact, being charged with it now. And we, we don't really know 100% what evidence they have against him. Presumably, it's enough that they think they can secure a conviction. Insane. I mean, what a fucking wild, you know, turn of events on... Right. on Potentially, you know, the most important case. 26 it, years since Pac died history, is right? one of the most important things of all time. And it, it's weird almost that it's not getting, uh, yes. it, it's getting a bunch of attention, yeah. but not maybe right. the amount you right. would expect for how huge Tupac was, right. it is, you know? I and think it, once the trial starts, and now, because yeah. right now they're all actually trying to figure out if it's going to be like a trial that we can watch. Mm -hmm. I think that's when more eyes will actually pick up on it. But that was one of the craziest uh, stories in a minute. Like, what the fuck? All the self-snitching. But with that self-snitching, how do you feel about all the, the self-snitching and the snitching that's going on with, like, the current state of hip-hop? Because we were talking out there. You said you're not fucking with the current state of rap. I don't know, but it has nothing to do with the snitching. The snitching, thing. just in you know, general. I mean, I, mean I, I guess, like, in a, in a small way it does. I mean, obviously, like, you know, I had I had what I had to say about the whole 6 9 scenario and and honestly, you know, going back on that a little bit, I don't know if I don't know if I would still say the same stuff now. I, having kind of learned a little bit more about that case specifically, um, but like you're seeing, you're seeing a lot of it with like YSL. Obviously, Gunna's out now, um, and it put on a show the other night, and I, like. I don't think anybody gives a fuck, bro. I don't think anyone cares about any of that shit anymore. I think code wise, like for at least at least like outside of LA and New York, like it seems like I don't even know if in New York it really even matters. Like it just oh, it matters. It matters so much to a lot of people. I think the difference with Gunna is that A has he made a comeback? Yes, because he made a hit song. Now, is he going to be able to have the same loyal, dedicated fan base if he doesn't have a hit song on his next project? That, to me, is kind of like remains to be seen. The snitching thing is still huge with anybody who sees himself as like a street dude. I think that the reason why Gunn is also getting a pass, too, or, or people seem a bit more forgiving is because what he did just is very dissimilar 
to what Six Nine did. Nothing that Gunner really said is going to be used against him in court or yeah, against that's Thug what or it anything. Like, it's that's just what it not like. as what serious. I saw, what I There's saw. levels. He's like a two and. Six nine was like a ten. Yeah, what I saw from the gunner shit was like it was it almost it didn't seem like it was gonna help anyone do anything that wasn't already like dude that 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 is your goal. That is your goal as it pertains to conversations with investigators. Mm. Like like when I saw that like when you're when you talk to investigators like you're 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 it, when you're in that world you're purposely trying to give them whatever possible to get to get out without giving them anything at all. Mm. It's all smoke and mirrors. You know what I'm saying? So it, what, what did he, what did he even say? It was like, it was like he, he wasn't willing to like say that. No, they asked said that involved. it was a gang. They asked him four different questions, but one of the main questions that everyone's calling him a snitch is because they asked him, uh, they said, do you agree that people in the organization YSL have committed crimes? And he said, yes, ma'am. But, 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 but here's my question. Like, this is not to, not to like clear him, nor does my, opinion on it matter at all but like but like you're you're sitting there you're gonna mm -hmm. right who's trying to create an appearance of rapport with the investigators right because that's going to help you in the end right knowing that these motherfuckers have wiretap helicopter police informant snitch millions of fucking documents and details on the crimes that have been committed by YSL and it comes down to a question where, that they're asking you, like, do you think your gang committed crime? Do you think water is wet is what they're asking. Do you think that water is water? That's what they're asking him. And his him answering that question, yes or no, could decide his fate. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not, yeah. I'm not, it's not like they're like, okay, we have no idea who pulled the trigger. If you tell us who did it, we'll let you off. That's some real snitch shit. But, but keep the, in mind that this this gang code or this like non-snitching code encompasses so many stupid ideas that it even says that you can't tell on a dead person yeah, who is that. not capable of so even the, being charged with it. So like when you hear Boosie have a conversation with it, I mean, there's just no logic to it. It's just 100%. You can't do it. You should be happy to sit in prison for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, and, and that to me is is the thing that seems a little bit more out of style now is this like no snitching absolutism real that, code that people are real latching code. onto. Yeah. Like real code. Yeah. And that's why and that's why, by the way, that's just come that was just me having an opinion on it. Like I understand, I understand the code. The code is you're not saying shit. You're not supposed to say shit. If you're saying anything, it's suck my fucking dick. And they ask you a question, yo, i like, wh where were you on Friday night? I was fucking your wife. Like that's the code. <laughs> yeah. That's the code. That's how it's supposed to be done. But to your point, who's actually still doing that? Whatever. To me, it's just like if you're giving up info that already exists. Sorry, fuck that actually real general high level it's not even info if you're just making statement a statement or answering a question like that i don't know it, like i said it's not my place to be to be commenting on but but hit, the reason why i'm not the reason the hip hop thing is just a sound thing mm -hmm. for me i don't i don't know i don't know what it is it's like dude i said the other day that jay made kanye on twitter mm -hmm. man i almost got fucked up i but, did get fucked up but he did he did he yeah. helped 100% he would have been Almost like as gigantic as he is right now without Jay, in my opinion. I don't think and, so. And I, I realize he gave him a huge contribution. I just think where Ye was at at his at that moment in his career, he would have like linked up with any fucking artist in the game and made massive undeniable <laughs> but, hits. But, 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 but that okay. Jay Z stamp at the time, yeah, made it helped him the cool time. when it, when he was coming in the game as a nerd. I just feel like he would have got where he was going regardless. So, yes, yeah, so, okay. He was that driven. No, that 100%. Motivated. This isn't me trying to take anything out of Kanye's, you know, portfolio. The dude is one of the most legendary creators in the history of, of art, uh -huh. uh, music, and any kind. But but the idea of, of saying that Jay, who at the time was... There ain't God. even there ain't even kings like now yeah. like there were when Jay was at his height. That mm -hmm. doesn't exist. It's too demo democratized. Yeah. Yeah. Jay was was the absolute fucking 
king of the world at that point. Right? And this is a time period where nobody got on without a huge cosign from a big star. There was no, know? there was no social yeah. media. There was no internet. Yeah. There was no, Oh, let me, let me hit up some Atlanta rappers and see if they want my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you could get it to them, but it would be through a and R through the label. But if you signed to Jay Z, everybody in the game would instantaneously pay, pay attention, attention to you, to you yeah, and yeah. who you were. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, so like m- m- maybe like then obviously like wasn't too much longer than 50 kind of c- comes up and like democratizes it a little bit. And then it starts to trickle out from there. But like, dude, like 99, 2000, that was a Jay Z controlled universe. Mm. Right. So like, and even like th- a little bit therefore after, like when did, when did, um, when did uh hard knock, he didn't, who did Kanye do hard knock life? No. no. Right. He did. He, he did, did the blueprint. He did the blueprint. 2001 right? came out on 9 11. Correct. 9 11. Isn't that crazy? Yep. Isn't that nuts? And Fabulous' first album. So, like, what's the first What's the first big Ye produced track on Blueprint? I forget. It was, it was, it was just blazing no, it was, him it, all over it. Uh, Blueprint 2 had an actual verse of Kanye rapping. And I remember hearing it and instantly, like, looking at the track list and having to figure out who the fuck this guy was because he really, like, took it up. I forget what the song was called, but he took that opportunity on Blueprint 2, even though it was, like, track No, wasn't it the last song? It, yeah, it was, like, it was the last song much, where it was, yeah. like, uh, where Jay's, like, talking to him in the beginning of the song. Um, I would, fuck I he, oh my right god bro he's like fuck you Kanye is it that one isn't it that song where he's got like the little narrative in the beginning of the song let's get uh Na 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 na. No, that's a. C- we'll go all the way to the it, end. Why do I feel like it's been so long since yeah, all this happened? Yeah, that's like. Well, I'm not even seeing it on here. Because no, because that's it. That that's from. Uh, the Grinch. Blueprint that was, the was wrong a double song. album. Just, why does it only? Oh, that's why. Yeah, the bounce. Featuring Kanye West. Oh, yeah. I was way off, dude. The song I was just singing was a fucking, was a graduation song. That's all you get. That was a long time. All I'm saying is this. Started out as a producer for Jay, right? Then drops through the wire. And I'll always remember where I was when I heard through the wire. Mm. Like I was sitting on, I was sitting on a computer, had to go to work at Costco that day. And I heard this song and I was like, yo, this track right here is a very special song Mm. for whatever reason. Like I just knew that it was a fucking special track. Right. But like, I don't get those type of feelings towards any songs anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like when's the last time you heard a song that you were just like, that you were so like enthralled by that you were just so like, I'm going to be honest with you. I think you're like aging out of a bit. You got to like, stay more on it and listen to more new artists and shit in order to even be able to be capable of having those experiences where you do get moved by some shit because there are NBA Youngboy songs that have come out in the past couple years that have that experience that I have that experience with where it's like oh this is like one of the best songs I've heard in my life like I still have that experience where I, I will listen to rap songs all the time and I'm like this is amazing. I'm just such a shit, bro. I'm just such a, I'm not the right person for this conversation. Cause I'll tell mm-hmm. you why I'm, a, I'm, I'm too stuck in my genre of hip hop. Like, no, yeah. like, like I go through, do you know who I listen to? Yeah. This you, is not going to make any sense. Like right now I'm listening to Larry June. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, but like, bro, nobody, no TikTok Irish, kid yeah, is going to be like, Oh, Larry you're rocking June. with Larry June yeah. or, or Don Kennedy or shit like that. Like, like who else is even on my, on my shit right now? I got three Larry June suicide boys. Um, like, like it's not shit. Like I'm trying to think of who the last, what, what about, do you guys know who destroy lonely is? That's, I was literally yeah. about to ask yeah, you about like so I, you I got a couple, Emily, Yeah, right. for sure. For sure. I got a bunch of his songs on. So like technically that, that you're a true crime fan. Like at podcasts, yeah, or like nah, documentaries or nah, anything. No, nah, because I don't really. I get feel like the reason why I like drill music kind of overlaps with why I might also enjoy like some true crime type shit because it's like you're listening to music, but you're also kind of like decoding like a gang mystery while you're at. Well, it. yeah, because I like like Key Glock, yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. I listen to like some of that type of stuff, but it's as you could tell, like it's all, the majority of it is like very like street shit. Can you like, spend just, like a day with King Von, like only listen to King Von for twenty four hours and then report back to me? You, you also you yeah, have to watch a three yeah. hour documentary about. Yeah. Are you listening to King Von at the song, or? Um, I mean, I know a couple tracks, yeah, but yeah. By Magic no means King Von like, was on Impulsive. Be sick. Be for, yeah, we even had it, bro, bro. Because I would love, obviously, like would love to have some of those type of episodes, but like it just 
it's just I don't think it's Logan's like cup of tea. I got some good clickbait for you right here. I was watching like a YouTuber documentary. Obviously, we live in the commentary reaction video channel world. And I heard somebody just say impulsive has fallen off and that it used to be huge and now it's not huge. And I heard that and I was like, oh, I wasn't really aware that that was a narrative. I didn't really bother to go dig through the social blade or anything. But how would you react to that statement? Do you feel like there's any truth to that? Um, when it came out, there was a lot less podcasts. Yeah, I think I think views have have certainly gone elsewhere. I think there's I think at the end of the day, there's there's almost like a legacy running period for that type of like super clout infused, like ferocious viewing. Mm. Eventually, you're going to end up in a place where you just are relying on your true audience. Um you know, we'll, I mean, well, shit, we'll have episodes. It just is really, it, that's the other thing. It's really episodically rated and based on, on per episode performance. Mm. It's like we could do an episode that gets, you know, we did an Akon episode a couple yeah. weeks ago. We put it out a few weeks ago. How many the full interview get? Maybe like 600,000 or something like that. Pretty good. But he he's done a lot of other podcasts over the last few years well, that I feel like, you know. The reason I bring it up is because like. That was one of my favorite podcasts. Mm. I really mean that. Like Akon is a, is a very special human, bro. Great right? Man. Like just real good orator, spiritually driven, just smart dude, right? Knows about how to invest money so on and so forth. Then we'll do the next week we did a Erling podcast. I think it's got like 3.2 million on it. And so mm. we we'll always we you know what I'm saying? It's 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 and then anytime we the, the thing is is anytime we do a boys only episode, like if we sat down and did this for an hour and a half, it always does about 1 to 1.4 million. Because we get to talk about, because because like imagine it like this, if you have a guest on that's not like this super engaged, you know, social media guest like an Akon for example, who yeah. people know from Smack That and like some other shit, but like he hasn't exactly been <laughs> right going crazy in two thousand twenty three. You know what I'm saying? Only the people that give a fuck about what he has to say are going to listen to that, right? And we'll try to clickbait our, our way around it. Like we asked Akon about Lana Rhodes and the, t you know what I'm saying? Like we, you know, you could do your best, but at the end of the day, it's. You you can only you can only have so many high profile fucking guests on mm. until eventually you just gotta make content. Some of it's gonna get a, a you know seven hundred eight hundred thousand views whatever. Like bro, you're gonna you'll see the same thing with Full Send. Mm. Full Send was doing you know three million two million every episode. Now they've got episodes that do a million, and then a slowly but surely it'll drop down to under that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's. The audience changes. They move in other directions. They want new formats. They want new shit. They just stop watching content. Algorithms change. The YouTube algorithm has gotten brutal. Right. The YouTube al algorithm has gotten brutal, which sucks because that's where I burn all my energy. I, I don't post nothing on TikTok. I don't post, post nothing anywhere except YouTube and Snapchat. That's it. And the YouTube algorithm has gotten fucked up, dude. Like, really. And it's made, and it's made life really fucking hard because, man— just out of nowhere, bro. It, that's one thing. When you see your audience trickle off and you're like, quote unquote, falling off, that's fine. Like you, you can make adjustments, you do the best you can. But I hit a wall with on my channel uh -huh. where I was getting like, I was like hitting a million, like every episode, every week for sure. No matter what easy, it's sometimes more where it just went down to like 500,000, like out of nowhere. And really? then, and then I was just trying to, and now I'm climbing my way kind of back out of and it. And you feel like that was like an algorithmic thing yeah, at that something time? something like that. You want to know, what, you want to know some fucked up shit? You stop putting Lana Rose in the thumbnails and you no, got less views? No, that mm. had already no, that had already happened. <laughs> okay, okay. That's what that's when I was at five million. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um I think it has something to do with the Illuminati. Oh. Well, I can have a word with them for you. No. Because I, but, but, No, let me tell you no, let me really tell you why. I I mean that. Not the Illuminati, but the, the order of things. Uh -huh. I went to Israel. Went to Tel Aviv. And as you guys know, they got some, some they got some, some drama bro, oh, that's with neighboring Palestine, right? Like real drama. Mm -hmm. And so I put out these two videos that were fucking sick Israeli videos, like dope ass shit. Like I'm in the Dead Sea. Dude, the thumbnail is me and Summer Rae in the Dead Sea, her fucking right. popping ass out, like all the right things. Yeah. Like I investigated the Dead Sea with Summer Rae. But the down votes on the two Israeli videos were so much higher than my normal down votes two weeks in a row. I usually get 99.2% likes on my mm. videos because, as you said earlier, everybody likes them. They're fun, positive, great times. These weeks were like 93%. Mm. 
And after those two weeks, my channel just really started to act crazy, bro. And I, I started to have, like, bro, I'd never had a video under 700,000 in ages, bro. Never, 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 bro. Yeah. And now I got videos that I'm putting out with, with like 400,000 views on them. So you're saying the Jews went in there and no, I think the opposite. tinkered with it. Oh, yeah, right. The Jews okay. were trying to help. Okay. Yeah. I missed that. A little deep into the podcast. Uh, I missed yeah. who, was, who was doing what. The Palestinians. That's kind of scary, though. But no, no, no. But I, I, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyways. Damn. Are you a part of the prom, dude? Like, do you make money on prom? What the fuck is this? Did you get him to do all this shit? Nah. I, this I, is he's, fucked, he's, bro. He's, he's got his own research. No, I'm not. You're not. I promote Prime because I'm friends with Logan and I enjoy the product and, you know, I've been told that I will be made whole as a result of my effort. Efforts. One day he's just going to randomly give you 5% ownership. No. 5% <laughs> ownership is like fucking, it's like $800 million. Right. Fair enough. Like that. Yeah. No, I'm just going to wake up and have a little bit more money. That's okay. it. Yeah, it sucks. I fought for it. Yeah. You, f you tried to be yeah. early yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. But there's only so much to go around. Well, it's so closely guarded. There's no, no one has, it's not like, it's not like, oh, the side men have some and this person and Mike just got left out. Mm. Like it's literally five people. Right. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? So like nobody else is fucking like private equity's out. Like nobody's getting into this bitch. Like this thing's selling a billion, whatever the fuck it is. Everybody gets their money and never talks about money ever again. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I tried, I was like, dude, like I'm doing a lot of lifting here. I'm doing more than most people. I've been a part of this ship for a long time. Like. Jeff's taking care of, he's hit, like, why am I left out type shit? You know what I'm saying? And and it was, yo, you'll be, you'll be taken care of. But it's just, like, for example, the other fucked up thing is, like, people don't really understand this about equity in companies, but if I took even a small percentage of equity in that company that has a major valuation right now, I'd be tax liable for it now. Mm. So, like, and in reality, it's like, I don't know. So you could be on the hook for a huge amount of money before yeah, you actually cash called, out? They have this thing called I-9, which is like a um, a way to 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 prolong. But for the most part, yeah, if you take an equitable, equitable, equitable position in a, in a brand or a company, you're, you're technically liable for that tax now. Man, your lawyer is over whooping. My lawyers are crazy, bro. Or accountant, rather. And my accountants. And they're super, all super expensive. Yeah. Well, yeah. just not getting audited is a... A great thing. Oh, I, 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 over, I got audited. I, I overpay. I pay yeah. so. They just hit me for another like 68 or something that was left over from 2022. Last, I pay so much. I'm seven figures right. like every year. It's insane. Like I pay so much fucking money in taxes because I hate the IRS. You ever have a uh, sex? With no. That's, she, that's uh, what I gotta do. I gotta go she, do that. She has an. She has like an ongoing beef with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. major. <laughs> yeah, and I'm very. I actually have been very, told not to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> by, by her. More like by Lena. Like don't get yeah, involved. Yeah, maybe we just bleep that. It, it's a whole thing. But just bleep the name I said. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I have a because I have a loyalty to her. Yeah, yeah. I love her too. But I'm not. I'm I've still never, gonna fuck I've her never, off. Yeah. So. I've never had a. <laughs> I've never had a bad. <laughs> <laughs> That would they, oh, would man. that fit into the code? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, hey, no, but that's one thing. Once we started booking these like live orgies on the Plug Talk channel, that's where you start realizing there's a lot of people who don't get along because it's like, oh, we're gonna have this one dude oh, that I there's like. Hella beef in the space. This one guy on the show. Oh no, this girl and this girl hate him, and this girl hates him because this girl hates him, and boom, he, he's he's off the list. There's a lot of there's a lot of drama. All the girls I ever fucked with, I swear to you, are all the least drama. Right. Lana was Lana was a little bit of drama just by way of I think she's another one of those like sits on the throne type take shots and also is kind of but like bro all these. M's cool, dude. M is cool as fuck. Why did she, Why did Lana lose like forty pounds since you broke up? With her? What's going on? She got a whole bro. new look. She's out of control, bro. Hey, you got real teeth, right? Yeah, that's tight that we have real teeth because it's I'm like everybody. A whole on this side. Oh, really? Damn, uh, I thought you had like good. No, real I do. Teeth. Like I have a great smile. There's but like I have so a... few people though. Like when I was thinking about the other day, I'm like, I'm one of the only people I know that has like straight teeth that are real teeth. Like, there's so many fake teeth motherfuckers out here these days. Yeah, it looks like they have wooden teeth. I mean, it, it, a lot like of times... George Washington. It looks a lot better than if they were to keep their shitty teeth, right? I like talking about the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, <laughs> Keep going. Emily has a new movie coming out. 
Really? Yeah. Um, That's sick. Chloe uh, Cherry breaking down doors. All these porn girls are going to be yeah, famous actresses so, now. Yeah, Emily, Emily's got a movie coming out um, f- called Divinity with uh, created by... Uh, Fuck, was it Soderberg or something like that? She, she was she was actually at this was crazy to me. I was at Sundance and she was at Sundance premiering her movie, which was sick. That was cool. So she's got this movie coming out. Bella Thorne's in it. Mm. Fucking um, one of the rap chicks is in it. Uh, what's her name? Um, was she dating like Nas or something? Oh, Glorilla. No, 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 not, not <laughs> no, not Glorilla, not Sexy Red or whatever the He's girl with the big afro is. Was, What's the chick with the afro? Uh, ice, icy, ice spice, ice, ice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Icy. yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yo, okay. you're really no, no, out no, of no, it no. if you don't know ice spice. No, this chick's name is uh is like I can't remember. She was dating Nas, Khalees. Nah, 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 nah. Anyways, Divinity is coming out, so she's cool. I'm just thinking of all the cool girls. Dude, I like who else? Gina Valentina may be the one of the coolest. Mm. She was Bad. so dope, so dope, bro. She was just had such a cool vibe to her. She had a boyfriend for years now. She, she's yeah, I was with shooting. her before all that. Before yeah. all that, back in like the Riley days, before Riley was was, and obviously Riley's like the mother, like the queen of like all of it. Because you want to know what the most legendary thing is that people always ask me what's the best sex scene you ever filmed or the hottest experience or whatever. There was one night in Miami where. I fucked Riley, Lena, G, uh, Gina Valentina, and Abby Maley at the same time. And the only reason why I was able to have that experience is because Riley was trying to kick it with Logan. Logan. <laughs> and she had fucked Logan like the night before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was ghosting her because he was on to bigger and better things probably knowing him. He's always got something new in the bag, right? The old Logan, yeah, not yeah, the new yeah, Logan. Yeah, yeah, the new yeah. Logan is a great loyal yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. But and I didn't know you yet, but I'm hearing about Mike, and I'm hearing about like, oh, so Mike was there, and Mike was doing this, and I'm just thinking, who the fuck is Mike? I never heard of Mike. <laughs> and uh, but the, oh, that's crazy that the only reason why I had that orgy was because Riley got left on red that night with Logan. Yeah, and so it ended up being good for you. <laughs> it worked out for me, yeah. <laughs> dude. Abby, May, I mean, dude, I remember all. I had that whole, even like, dude, I had a whole. I hung out with. Like, have you ever worked with Gabby Carter? No. She's like, she. Some. It's funny because like some of the girls are like way like off the the grid. Like, yeah. I feel like especially because all I want to say about her is she was dope as fuck too in real life. Like, it's just crazy because like some once OF happened, like they all they almost became so democratized that they could be like socially removed from the whole scene while still making the content. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like. They don't have to play in the same waters. Everything. I've seen a lot of girls basically like vanish from the LA scene, but still keep doing their thing in suburbia. Facts. Yeah. That's a big thing. But I, but you know, sometimes I still, I, I, they're all cool chicks, bro. That's the thing. That's all I'm trying to get at is like, they, you know, I always remember those days hanging out with all them. Like even like Alina Lopez, like all of them were just dope ass. Like they would start playing guitar and they got talents left and right. But isn't it funny that. You and I spend a lot of time around porn stars and think that they are largely very cool, down to earth, good people. But then you just have the sector of dudes on the internet who have never been around any of them to any extent and are so convinced that this is the most wicked thing on earth and that these women are the worst people on earth. Well, the practice, the practice of it is sure is certainly up for debate. If yeah. you, if you, if you That's feel fair. that, that, that sex work is detrimental to society and to, to the male mind, that's certainly an acceptable, you know, uh, conversation and a dialogue for us to be having. What are the true effects of, of this content that's being put out? But to then, <laughs> But to then, the you know, really, really villainize the women because because obviously, yes, we're 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 susceptible to being judged for our decisions in life and the and the things we do. But like, I it just sucks because I know these girls and they are just so they're such good people. The majority of them. There's some there's some that I've met that I automatically did not fucking like. Mm-hmm. Those ones I won't bring up. But like, but like. The majority of these girls are just so sweet and just down to earth and like, you know, like it just all I ever wanted to do with them was honestly like everybody always got into this like thing where they were like, oh, he's promoting, you know, their OF. He's promoting this. I'm like, dude, I've never made a dollar. No, I've never gotten paid any amount of money to promote anyone's sex work, whatever. I just always saw, said these are cool chicks and like they're good in content. Like they're like Lana told me the other day I had a conversation with Lana like maybe like five or six days ago because she'll still hit me occasionally to just like chat or whatever. Tell her to unblock Lena the plug on social media. I'm sure she'll get tagged in it. Yeah. But, but I, 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 I've, I I've, been tr- it, I've been trying to stop 
just by way of over respect for my new relationship to stop talking to her because it, I can understand how that can be, especially mm. with someone like Lana Rhodes could be a, a thing for a new relationship. But the last time I talked to her, um, she, she like kind of thanked me for, for the content that we shot together. And you know, this whole time, like me thinking back, like, damn bro, my career is like, people want to say Logan made me. Like I had 230,000 after like years with Logan. I was with Lana for like six months. I gained 2 million followers on every channel. You know what I'm saying? Like she was, wow. she yeah. was the real, now Logan introduced me to her, but she was like truly the real like relationship, you know, that built the, the original channel, the original followership. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm always like, yo, I have this real debt of gratitude to her, but she turned and said, thank you to me because she was like, you showed the world, you know, that I was more than that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That I was a human. And that's always been my goal. It's been like, yo, I'm going to make content with these girls because I know that they are humans. And like, what if, what if even one of these girls, and this isn't shitting on sex work, right? But like, but like the industry is nasty. You know, the real industry itself, maybe not the place you play where you, where you self-manage, but like the industry itself is nasty. And there's a lot of nasty shit that goes on. And if I felt like if I could show a girl the idea that they can get out of that space, then, then that's good. You know what I'm saying? That's a good thing. Like Lana never went, Lana had a Brazzers contract. When me and for her first started talking, she had a Brazzers contract on the table for like, I don't remember what it was. It was like several hundred thousand dollars to like get back in. Mm -hmm. It was very introductory. Like it was going to be like her first thing. And you shut this down, much to the detriment of all these men out there. Correct. Guys, I'm sorry. He fucked you over. Yeah. Damn. Well, it wasn't that I shut it down. I just told her, I was like, yo, like we're doing this content together. Like you, you know, like she was already on the podcast. Like she, we, yeah. we had done a couple things together and I noticed that she had like kind of a spunky, cool personality. Do you have to do that? And then it wasn't long after that. She, you know, like a lot of things happened. She started her own show. Then like now fucking Alexander Wang has her walking on the fucking runway in New at um, uh, Paris Fashion Week. Wow, you know she's know doing that. shit with with other big you know brands and that are that are willing to kind of embrace these ex workers. Obviously, you're like you're seeing what's going on with Mia Khalifa. Like she's made like a, a bunch of strides in the fashion space, and so Lana's kind of tried to do the same thing too. And like all the chicks fuck with her. The what's her name Julia Fox had her on, and all these other podcasts that she's done. And so I think for me like. I got such a like strangely titled as this person that was like promoting these porn stars when in reality I was hoping that I could promote the fact that they were actually people. Right. You know, you're a saint. I don't, that's not what I wanted you to say. There. <laughs> Cause that's not what I'm looking for. But I just, but I, I just, I just, you know, like I had Sneeko attacking me last week saying like you promote only fans, but, but I never promoted. I've nothing. Seen it. I, I no never had about any. That. Who's Lena's baby daddy? Oh, uh, Lana's Lana. Yeah. If you can't look at that baby and immediately know whose father, who the father is, then you're, then you, I don't so know. So it's, it's, it's who everyone's saying it is. Well, bro, but all I'm saying is this: just look at the kid, look at the kid, like really look at the kid's head and and make a decision based on that. Like blue face. It, it's blue face. <laughs> <laughs> blue face, baby. Yo, 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 blue face. Blue face's situations, cr like I, I don't know. How, what are we? Four hours now? Three hours. Three yeah. hours. Blue I gotta go fuck Gianna yeah, Dior yeah, okay, soon, bro. Okay, okay. I hate it because I want to hear your full nah, in-depth nah, 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 analysis. Nah, 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 Actually, yeah. Wait, are you waiting? Are you single so you can fuck Krishan Rock? What's that? That's his uh, most recent baby, baby mama, mama. But, oh, but, know, but maybe not. I know about her. Who wins, KSI or Tommy Fury? No cap. It's really hard to say because KSI hasn't fought in a long time. I'm going to let you close this up. No, 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 heat no, 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 I'm leaving. I'm leaving because I have to go also. <laughs> I hate this. Joe Rogan doesn't do this. Joe well, Rogan will, would push his sex scene back. Well, no, I mean, we're three hours deep. This is what I talk about when I talk about podcasting. If, oh, I, if anybody I ever wanted to watch a 12-hour show, I could I could bust it. out five hours, no problem right now, if I didn't have to. No, it's fine. You know. Go, because I should go. No. But 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 what I, all I was going to say was this. I, I, KSI hasn't fought in a long time. Tommy Fury, is, he just beat Jake Paul, who's, who's probably the best fighter in the space. You know, so I, if K, let's put it like this. If KSI wins this fight, bro, he's, he's on, he, at that point, he's on top, top. He's really on top. I got me in that shit. Was that Fousey? Slamming the door. <laughs> Imagine. I, th there was a moment when I had Keemstar and Fousey going through that thing where I was like, is this my purpose? Like, should I just <laughs> like keep a live stream going all day, every day, and just let random YouTubers show up? Like, would that even work? <laughs> like, if I had leaned into that 
My life could have gone in a different direction. Completely different direction. No drill rap. You could have a steak deal <sighs> or a kick deal. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 that's, Shh, that's just going away, right? Sh- I, it's not going to be around in a couple of years. I have no idea. Shout out to the shout out to the no jumper audience. I'm once again crazy all over the place. I did the best I could to keep things on track. I will say this: if anyone watching this for any reason is in Manchester in the United Kingdom, my next ten ten burger pop up because we didn't even talk about any mm. burger stuff. My next ten ten burger pop up is going to be October thirteenth and fourteenth, which is Fight Weekend. In Manchester, in Great Britain, uh, and all the details will be posted on the 1010 Burger page at 1010 Burger on Instagram. Uh, you should come out. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be serving burgers. It's going to be great. I know we were going to meet and you were going to talk about burgers, but we didn't get a chance to. But burgers are lit. I yes. love fucking yes. burgers so much, and I also like that you are fully embracing your mini Dave Portnoy uh, status with this because, like, I've always thought with the burger thing, like, oh, that's funny. Like, Mike is doing like the Dave Portnoy pizza thing, but he's doing it with question. burgers, and you now you're like, oh, he made a pizza app. Fucking, I'm making a line no, of pizza joints. Let me ask joints. you a question: Do you think? Or do you truly joints. believe? That this man was the first person to rate food, bro, bro. Food has been has been rated. Movies have been rated. Music has been rated by every person since the beginning. And you do it as part of the vlog. It's not like a Twitter clip. No, it's not even that. But on a scale of on a scale of zero to ten, people have rated everything. Mm -hmm. And yet, just because he got big rating pizza, also we asked him about it on the show. He was completely fine. He didn't see it as like a. He probably jokingly said it the way you did because that's how Dave is. Fucking smartass. Obviously, I think you gotta own it. No, no, no. But 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 what I'm saying is this. It wasn't like I was like, oh, shit, Dave's having success over on the pizza side. Maybe right. I'll do it with burgers. I like, have a friend who literally makes like, it's almost like a cover band the way he just does TikToks like doing the Dave Portnoy thing. <laughs> and they get like 20 views. So it's like nobody's going to have any idea who I'm talking about. But it's fucking insane. Like, but I mean, you're having a lot of success with it. So I got to oh. think of like a food that I could go eat. Like, what the fuck am I going to eat? Cheeseburger. Bur- burgers and pizzas are done. No, I'm, I'm not going to be another tr- burger guy. You should try mine, bro. Fox, I'm Fox. your burger. I would love you to guys, try it. You guys yeah. should both. No, because I'm going to do something this week in LA. I but saw it's, you but only that. for, but only for like us. Not oh, for, yeah. I'm down to do Let it. me know. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw you uh, destroying the Mr. Beast burger. And I was like, I'm glad you kept it real. Did you, but did you hit him up and be like, hey, let, just no, so you know? No, it's because I, what, why would he give a fuck? No, I rated point, right? it in the, I rated it in the past. Beast came to the house or, or sent his team to the house with a truck and they made it. I gave him an 8.0 because it was a good burger back in the day. And this is back before I started rating like real, real good street casual burgers. And I just went and got it at American Dream, and I, it may have, i mean, it was one of the worst things I've ever had in my life. It was—it was a tragedy. Like they, they've had a lot of trouble with um, with quality control. Mm. It's Beast not Beast's fault. It's yeah, not yeah. Beast's fault. I mean, I'm it's sure it's a failed had, business model. If anything, hundred percent, right? they're cooking in ghost kitchens. I want to know every motherfucker that's ever puts their hands on my burger, bro. You know what I'm saying? What's like the, the best the, burger in LA? Right now, it's it's been tricky because I think right now the top rated has been Burger She Wrote for a long time, and and they were attributing like fifty percent of their business to me after I put that review out. They opened a second location. Everything's a great double smash Oklahoma oh Wagyu. Gosh. I didn't know. So about it's this. two Wagyu beef patties, but it's got a ton of onions fried and raw in Where it. Where is it? It's on Beverly. They've okay. got two locations. Oh. Burger Shiro is incredible. It's if a hop, you, skip, and a jump away. For the first try, time you try, you should you'll it'll blow your mind. But Burger. then but then in Hollywood. Burger I want to say this. There's a place called For the Win, which is my second ranked, and it may now be number one. Like, if, wow. like, like I would feel more comfortable sending you all to For the Win uh-huh. that you would get the product because I think Burger Street Road's been having a little bit of like ups and downs. Where Quality like, wise, yeah, really. But it's still always yeah. if you went there, it'll still be the best burger you ever had. Right. But I think For the Win is is just this hole in the wall, like Hollywood kind of like hood spot that's just so fucking. Maybe good. when I order, I say. I'm a I'm an influencer. I'm a well known personality. This? Don't give me some bullshit ass bur- burger like you're gonna give this guy behind me online. When you go in, point at the picture on the wall because my face is on their wall. Oh wow! That's and great. so just say like, oh, I know Mike. He said if I come here, like I'm gonna have the best burger of my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or even just have me call them before you go. Mm. But I'd rather you just come eat mine. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something either Pause. Thursday or Friday. <laughs> Of course your ass would think of that. You're getting the cuck award. <laughs> That's what she said. Mandingo Hall of Fame. Get the fuck out of here. Mike, I got to go. I got to go be a sex worker. Uh, thank you, Remo, for hanging out here. <laughs> just keep going. Bro. I'm yeah, we broken. could have kept going. No, no, you no, guys keep going. No, 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 go it's fully burger. No, cool. My it's phone good. died. I can't even. <laughs> burger she wrote. Yeah, whoop, See, that's why you got to learn how to whoop. He's sitting there with his phone open, burning battery all day. My guy. Yo, Mike, no my man. Thank you, Remo. Thank you, Mike. Everybody. <laughs> 
Check in with Mike. Everything that he got going on, Snapchat, etc. Like, comment, and sub subscribe. Yeah. Is that what they do? They yeah, subscribe. Thank you for nowadays. subscribing. We out.